This week on Waxing the Porpoise, G-Baby and the usual suspect Steve welcome back special guest Staring John to kick off our Daniel Craig era Bond film retrospective starting with the first entry in franchise evolving Casino Royale from 2006. Join us as we discuss an alternate dimension Tarantino version of the film, how our villain Le Chief drew inspiration from Aleister Crowley, and how this Bond's distinct tone establishes a new direction for the franchise. This is your ass, please. This is your ass, player. Let's wax this double O porpoise. Chase, don't do that. You see, we're we working on his brow chakra. We're just in back of the crown chakra. All right, welcome to Waxing the Porpoise. We are back again here on episode 48 now, gathered to discuss 2006's Casino Royale. This was this is uh, kind of just a wild hair. I thought it would be fun to bring on Staring John to cover the Craig era uh, Bond films. And so the, the tentative plan is to do one a month over the next four months and, and dig into the Craig era, omitting Quantum of Solace for timing reasons and just because I think there's a lot more meat on the bone with Skyfall Spectre and No Time to Die. So yeah, that's that's what we're going to be doing. And so yeah, we're kicking it off with the, the first entry in the Craig era, Casino Royale. Um, tonight you have myself, Jim G. Baby. And I just looked at him and I said, I always enjoy a cigarette before sex because I wanted him to know I was going to screw him. And I did. <laughs> and of course, to my virtual right, as always, we have the usual suspect, Steve. Come on, man, play something from Stranger! <laughs> we strictly do 80s Joel music, sir. <laughs> yeah. How's it going, buddy? Going good, man. Good to see you both. Word. And coming back again, this time talking Bond, we have Staring John. First, you lose my money. And now this, butthead. You idiot. Whoa, jerk! Sure. Oh, shit. Remember that? that is a memory, dude. That's a deep pull. That Can you pick up memory. where that where that might be from, Steve? Yeah, Wonder Years, right? Wonder yeah. Years. I remember dude, that it took guy. Me a fucking minute to find that. Figure out what lot. episode that was from. I got a lot of play between you guys. Oh, dude, we could Jack? not. Start <laughs> I don't know what it was. We were playing Marvel. <laughs> I think I, I was staying at your house or you were staying at my house or something. And fucking, dude, we played Marvel 3 for like an hour and then binged out Wonder Years. And it was like just before we were like dozing off sleep. And that episode came on. Like, oh, jerk. And yeah. And just fucking could not stop laughing. The way uh, the, the movement, the physical movement of dude, Wayne, yeah. of, of like, like, because Kevin throws a like a dirt clod at him and yeah. it almost hits him and like when it's coming at him like wayne does this weird like pivot and like dances back and then he throws up his hand he's like whoa jerk and like <laughs> scuttles back it's just dude that fucking just hit hit the tuning fork immediately <laughs> yep Fuck cool. yeah super jack yeah. to be here thank you for having me again of course always a pleasure Absol- Absolutely. Yeah, this is, I think this should be a, a, a fun discussion and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, before we uh, get right into it, I guess, uh, I don't know, are, are you a, much of a Bond guy, Steve? I imagine not, but um, what's, what's your uh, familiarity level with Bond in general, not um, just the Craig era? I've seen a couple of the older ones. I like the really old ones just because they're so different than the modern ones. Um, in between GoldenEye and this one, I think I've seen one, and it was really fucking bad, so I never went back to watch any of them. Was that one a older one? No, I mean chronologically between GoldenEye and this one. I think it was <laughs> maybe I think it was maybe Tomorrow Never Dies or or there's some stinkers following whatever Goldeneye. it was. Yeah, cuz GoldenEye was dope. GoldenEye was awesome. Um, yeah. 
but Which whatever is the same whatever one I of this and Casino Royale, I didn't, oh, no I didn't even realize until doing some research for uh, for this. Yeah. Huh? That that's interesting because they're they seem very different style wise, but um, yeah. So no, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought this up because when I went to look it up, I didn't even realize that there have been what five Daniel Craig five ones. Or, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of a long winded answer to your question, but yeah, I think that's pretty similar for people around our age, like in, in their thirties, mid late thirties. I think most of us grew up on at least to some degree or going to friends' houses and playing Goldeneye. Oh yeah. 64. So that was kind of like a, it, it, Goldeneye was attached to like a, a certain like cultural kind of time and place. And I think it's interesting. Like you say that, uh, this director, you were surprised that he directed Goldeneye and this. And I, I agree because they're very different, like in tone, but, um, and the director's name is Martin Campbell. Uh, but I think both films sh- are, are similar in the fact that they both shook up like the bond formula and like the oh, style, yeah. like, whereas Goldeneye was a pretty drastic jump from, timothy dalton and roger moore and sean connery is like a, a different style to it and then you have diminishing returns on the following brosnan flicks uh yeah yeah like no time uh what is it die another day i can't remember all of them but the last the last pierce brosnan one is like the the worst like it, it's pretty bad um it gets real like cartoony and kind of comic booky almost um but then again like to revive this the series and kind of put a brand new spin on it is what casino royale did it it brought it into this more like jason like born ultimatum yeah more gritty like that kind of fucking like different grain like on the film you know um that's my take at least like i I think it's cool that that he came in different eras and kind of jumped it like jump started the series in a new direction um but yeah, that's how I got started with Bond too. Was like Goldeneye was probably the first Bond memory I have playing the games. And my grandpa was a huge Bond dude, so I also remember growing up and like I think it was TBS or TNT in the '90s pretty regularly. They did like they, there was like Bond months or like weekends, and they just play fucking like Bond like like back to back to back to back for like 48 hours. Yep. So I remember kind of like jumping in and seeing a little bit of Goldfinger, seeing a little bit of Moonraker, some of the classics, yeah. like, uh, but never really like watched them, watched them until I was older. And I still haven't really dipped into the back catalog too much. Uh, I've, I've come to find I'm, I like Connery. I think that's the standard. Like he's suave motherfucker. I, yeah. I really don't care for Roger Moore at yeah. all. Uh, like not even a little bit. Um, and I, th- I think Timothy Dalton uh, is pretty, pretty serviceable. Yep. Um, I actually really like the living daylights is, is a really cool yeah. one. And I guess we'll, we'll probably bring it up maybe later in trivia, but he kind of got the shaft. I guess he was supposed to do more, but he did, he only did two. And then that's when we come right into Pierce Brosnan era, golden eye. Um, uh, John. So what, what's your, I know you're, you're more of a kind of a purist when it comes to the Bond films, you've seen a lot more of the older ones. What, what's your background with Bond? Yeah, I, uh, same situation started off with Goldeneye, right? As a kid had seen them. And, um, uh, it's funny because my dad, what doesn't really watch movies. Like he's not a movie person, like at all, but he had this friend who always came around and, uh, we would always go to the movies together. And so we started going and seeing all the bond movies and he's like, Oh, you should really check out some of this older, the older ones. I think you dig them. And so started with, uh, I think the first old one that I went back and watched was diamonds are forever. And so that one is, that's like one of my favorites for sure. Is that 64? That one is, Um, or was that one of the first Connery? No, it's a, it's it's earlier, but it's not the it's not the it's not the first one. Uh, it, it's one of the earlier ones. That one's Diamonds Are Forever is really good. Uh, it was just I I didn't expect to like like see something old. Like it, it kind of is weird to think about because I know we talked about this with the westerns the last time I was on too. Because I I didn't really think I would like westerns, and then mm-hmm. watching them with my grandfather, right? You know, stay the night at his house and. He'd fall asleep in his chair and I'd sit there and watch, you know, little big men and shit like that. And mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, damn, like 
this is actually really good. And then yeah. the same thing happened with the with the bonds. And so <clears throat> I was really excited when uh, when the uh, Daniel Craig one started coming around because uh, I had just I had seen I had obviously didn't get watch get to watch the old ones in the theater right. But I remember I think I watched. With the exception of Goldeneye, I saw all the other ones in the theater with that uh, with my dad's friend Dave. Dave, he was a big meathead guy. He was cool, but yeah, that's what really <laughs> sparked me into it. Right on. Uh, what if if you do you have a a quick top three or top five off the top of your head, like like from the the total Bond verse? Yeah, I would say I would go. Diamonds are forever. Uh, no particular order. Uh, Living Daylights, and I'd have to go with Casino Royale. Casino Royale, I think, really is it. It could, I could probably call that one my favorite, mm-hmm. just absolute best. But those those three are just ones that really I just they're just super dope. Sweet. Um, all right, I guess before we get into it, what's what's the verdict? What do you think of this one, Steve? Yeah, I liked it a lot. I, I liked it more than I was expecting to. Nice. I have I have two questions that we can get yeah. into later during the synopsis. That uh, one is just a general question that I don't know if I'm missing something, and the other is I might be dumb and missing like a plot point. But yeah, we we can we can get into that in a little bit. Do do either of you know off the top of your head how many Bond movies there are all, t- all together? Are we talking like thirty, forty? I think we got to be in that range, somewhere between twenty-five and thirty or so. I know it's say. over. I think it's over twenty-five. I think it's like thirty-two. I think thirty. Uh, the No Time to Die is thirty-two. I believe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's bit, uh, three, five, ten, fifteen. But yeah, it's yeah. Yep. If if I had to if I had to dig deep to find one criticism, the only thing I could think of was I wish. La Chief was in it more. Like I yeah. thought he was such I thought he was such a cool character. I yeah I was yeah. bummed he, he wasn't in it more. And yeah, that would that would be my only knock against it. So Yeah, that, this was my first introduction to uh Mads Mickelson who plays La Chief. And uh it's weird too, he's one of the like the villains that like doesn't really get his hands dirty. It's like everything he's doing is from like the neck up. Um I guess you could argue there's there's some other people like that too, like Blofeld's not a real imposing like physical For force sure. either. But um, we'll get to him later. But uh, yeah, I really liked his his character. He played a really good good villain, uh, and I'm glad that he's but gone on to do other things. Like this was, I think he he's a Danish actor, and he's he's big over there. He still does stuff. Uh, a lot of Danish movies too, or I mean, not a lot, but he still does. But uh, that was, I think, that was his. Fir- this is his first, uh, like, big splash for American audiences. Um, yeah, he's great in it. Uh, so that's that's our main villain, Daniel Craig. Obviously, is Bond. I did a little research too about because ar- around the time I wasn't like hyper focused on all this stuff, but I guess during the time the casting of Daniel Craig was pretty controversial. Oh yeah. Be- because uh, and do you have any notes on this or any any background you wanted to just uh, just from memory? Like uh, I remember during that time because I was you know anxious and excited for the release, and then it was like, oh, they got this fucking blonde haired, blue eyed pussy to play James Bond. <laughs> like, like they were they were kicked like because there was he was going to a shoot. And uh, I heard him talking about it in a in an interview, and he was like, I didn't realize the gravity. Uh, this was Daniel Craig. It's like, I didn't realize the gravity of the character until I'm like, I'm riding, we're in this boat and we're going to over, they're, they're going to shoot something. And it's this very early in production. They're like, Oh, take a look at the new James Bond. And it's a picture of him. And he's wearing a fucking life jacket in the boat. Right. And <laughs> oh, people man. are just fucking re- this. Oh my God. P- this is our bond life jacket, blonde hair. blue eyed. <laughs> just fucking- Let's talk music. Do you like the Elton John song Rocket Man? I don't like soft ass shit. Yeah, dude, it was. And I, 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 that's the thing I remember the most about it. Everybody, uh, I think w- we talked about it briefly when, um, well, I think it was Skyfall. When Skyfall was coming out, we had talked about it a little bit because they did. There was some other shit in there too that, like, hardcore James Bond fans were like, "What the fuck?" But when I was good. looking it's... for, uh, I was looking for my my weekly installment of my favorite cunty movie review. I was surprised to see a couple were like, 
I'm sorry, but I will never buy a blonde James Bond. Like what? Yeah. It was so, like, what it's so weird. Killer? Yeah, it seems so out of left field. Yeah, it, it's like clearly. I mean, if we're going off of like brawn and like physicality, it's like Daniel Craig fucking brought it, and then oh some. dude, he balled out. Yeah, and I like I, the thing I respect about him too is like he did a lot of his own stunts, yep. and like he he has the like scars and like mm-hmm. like his body's like fucked up. Like now, like I. I don't know if I'm making this up or I, I heard this. I think I've heard something about him saying, like, you know, if I could do it over again, I would have done, like, less stunts. Like, he didn't come out and say I wouldn't have done Bond. He right. said, he's like, I think he wanted to do one less than they did. Yeah. Um, the, the studio, I think, just fucking threw briefcases of money at him and was like, come on, because um, they weren't ready yet. But right. I think he's wanted to do one less, and then he said I would have done way less of my own stunts because i think there's a, a stretch i can't remember which films where he was like they had to actually work around his uh recuperation like a shoulder yeah. injury, injury or some shit almost a lot like that was one of the things that was going around i think it was before quantum of Solace came out like oh shit daniel craig lost part of his finger in one of the stunts and was yeah like, oh, damn. <laughs> I, remember, I remember hearing a quote of his years ago and obviously I haven't seen him in like anything besides this in that horrific glass onion movie, which was so bad. Did you see that one? The knives out. I haven't sequel? Yet. It's so bad. I, I wasn't oh, I really, sequel, I wasn't really blown away by uh, knives out. I'm in the minority oh, on that you one will, too. Then you will hate the second one. I wouldn't even. I haven't. It. I've refused. I'm, I'm but, like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. But the, this was before either the last bond movie or maybe two ago. They were asking him, like, hey, are you going to come back and do another one? And he's like, I would rather break this wine glass and gash both of my wrists open than do another Bond movie. And I guess they Damn. probably just I, they probably just backed up the Brinks truck and were like, <laughs> what about now? And he's like, fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are like, a coward <laughs> son of a bitch! Oh, Tom by Sizemore the way, just died. R.I.P. Pour one out for your boy, Tom Sizemore. Yeah. You don't know when to shut up. You don't know how to shut up. <laughs> I'll send you back to the States with a hunk of cheese wrapped up, stuffed up your ass, Caparzo. <laughs> Thought you liked it in the ass. Dude, There's he's in so much shit, dude, that you won't even realize. Like, the relic, he was in fucking uh, uh, Point Break. He has a bit part in. He like, plays an undercover like drug lord. Yeah, it sucks because like he had like, I I think the last I heard, like he was like on the mend like the last few years and like he had like cleaned up and his act and like really doing well for himself. And I think just like all those hard years finally caught up with him and took him a little bit too short. But yeah, he's 61. Well, I think an aneurysm can hit anyone really. Is that what it was? Yeah, I think it was an aneurysm that caused a stroke. Oh, fuck. Uh, Yeah, that's just like freak that that happens to people that fucking run four miles a day and fucking eat like you know perfect yeah it's like that shit can just happen you're in the shower and you're done yeah i mean that years sucks. of drug use may may have contributed i don't know i'm not a doctor after all but uh yeah 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 i i'm sure maybe if you peel the onion back a little bit but i do know i mean that shit it like it does affect like perfectly healthy people too so either way it's it's a fucking so, tragedy. Do you mind if, if I ask you my, my first question? Yeah, shoot. Because um, it, it doesn't have to do with anything later on in the movie. But I was a little surprised. Not that I liked the movie. I definitely enjoyed it from beginning to end. It didn't even feel like it was two and a half hours. I was a little surprised when I looked up the Rotten Tomato score that it was 94 with the critics and 90 with the audience. And I don't know... This didn't strike me as the type of movie that would be higher with critics than it was with the audience. Because, like when you compared it to a a born movie, I kind of thought the same thing. And Mm -hmm. like we've discussed, my, my taste in movies is not the most refined. So when I like something, usually I think it's going to get panned by right. Cunty movie critics. So I'm wondering if either one of you have any insight as to why this movie was so highly regarded by critics. Is it like a director thing or is it just a objectively good movie or, or what? I think it's just a good movie, man. I think it's, this is one of those films where I think there are a lot of themes and there's some like, they, they definitely like examine a more emotional and uh, like uh, 
a, a self-aware bond that it, it in all previous bonds, like maybe a touch of it with like Pierce Brosnan, but like, um, and there's, there's actual, like th- there's themes and stuff going on that you can peel back that I want to get into as well. But mm-hmm. I think you can also take it at face value and like, yeah, they like the, the beginning is an, a, a really cool intro. And then you go right into like bang this fucking parkour crazy scene, you know, like it has a lot of surface level, like just, you know, in spades like action like yeah it doesn't feel like two and a half hours there's explosions but i think beneath all that too there's there's a lot of subtleties so to me that's why i think this is it's one of those if you want a film to cater to the the broadest demographic it's one that can do those two things like it can act as and people can take it as this action shoot them up spy thriller fuck yeah and then it's also you're looking at bond in like you know seeing him deal with loss and while he is arrogant and kind of cavalier like that trademark kind of style of bond i feel like this is like this i think this is like a reboot or it's kind of it's like a it's a reimagining of of bond's story from kind of his start as a double o agent right. and he's he's not this built in like he makes a lot of mistakes in this movie <laughs> like blatantly right. and through his ego and his arrogance and the and he's got to get kind of he's got to get whipped a couple times in order to like realize he can't just get by on ego alone um that's just one of the things i think too like showing him deal with the loss of vesper at the end is right. pretty hardcore like in all the other films like you know he treats women like you know a different item on the menu you know whereas like i i bought his investment into vesper and like really like maybe i can change my ways and like this is the one you know i can fucking maybe not settle down have a picket fence but you know not fucking abroad in a different area code every night you know um okay yeah i could i could see that that's that's my take on it yeah I thought that one of the notes that I have written down too is just how good it's just one of the best origin story style movies. Like to me, it was real similar to like Batman Begins, where it's like Mm -hmm. you have this character that's just been around forever that has been done, you know, a bunch. And then this, this, like you're talking about in the reboot, like it's just the way that they brought it, brought it back and made it seem like, uh, I just, it was really good as far as re- resetting the table, like you're talking yeah. about, for, as far as em- emotionally and him being this, you know, he's always known, every Bond movie was kind of, there's like four things you knew were going to happen, right? He's going to fuck a bunch of bitches, he's going to drive a dope ass car, and, you know, there's going to be a sick gadget from Q. Exactly, yeah. And it we're really kind of, exactly, separated from, from that. And I think that uh, they kind of hit on that even more throughout his his tenure too as bond right like yeah so it's it to to me it was uh it was definitely a good a good re-jumping off point with bond yeah totally agree and they i think this guy knew and that's why coming back to golden eye maybe he was the perfect guy to start this this new franchise off on this foot is to do something completely different like like it this is what I did with Goldeneye, you know, we took it in a different right. direction. And then I know there's some really good writers attached to this too. I know Bond nerds will probably fucking just skewer me if I didn't mention the combo of Paul Haggis, Neil Purvis, and Robert Wade, I guess are really highly respected writers. And they had to do something different too, you know, like they had to change up the formula. And so like there's a whole team behind it, but yeah, like getting the guy who did, uh, golden eye and knowing you know they're going with someone that the fans aren't going to like but it seems like you know he was cast for a reason and the proof is in the pudding you know like now yeah. craig is considered one of like the best bonds ever all these films i know you have the recency thing kind of built in but um were, were people agree also, too. i mean were, were people losing their minds i remember a few years ago weren't they talking about idris elba taking over yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a lot out. of people that were hooting really? and hollering about having a black man as a bond, uh, a female as a bond, a female yeah. black woman as a bond. All right, well, uh, let's not go too not... crazy. <laughs> well, I, I mean, people were like, like once the speculation started, you know, after No Time to Die, okay, like all knowing that this was Craig's last one, then it goes, it's just like 
you know, the draft, the upcoming draft for sports, you know, people are breaking it down. They have like their mock lists of bond. Yeah. It's even like a betting. It's something you can bet on in Vegas. I think. Yeah. Like there's lines there's odds. on it. I think right now the front runner is Aaron Taylor Johnson, who is the, um, the dude, the, the kid from kick-ass. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Steve. Um, yeah. He was just recently in bullet train, I think with Brad Pitt. That looks like a lot of fun. I've heard it's a, it's a fun Bullet Train popcorn was sick. movie. Was it good? Yeah, it was real good. I want to check it out. Yeah, it's on Netflix right now. It looks dope. I read somewhere that they like were a... talking about Clive Owen at one point. I thought that would have been pretty cool. That would have been sick. Yeah. I think he's a little too long in the tooth now. Same yeah, with Idris sure. Elba. Like, yeah. I think, yeah, dude, if it were eight or ten years ago, fuck, maybe even five years ago, like I would, I'd love to see an Idris Elba bond i think that'd be fucking rad i'm yep. i'm a huge luther fan i'm a huge yeah. idris elba fan in general and i think you i think he'd be excellent um yeah i just saw a luther movie came out i texted you about that the other day yeah and i've i i meant to respond i didn't i have total blinders on i i heard yeah, some I heard scuttle about, about it, it but i didn't i didn't realize so it's been released i think it's in the theaters now and it's getting released on netflix in a week or two damn I need to go That's back crazy. and finish it. Who showed me? I remember I heard about that show from you. Yeah, dude. And Luther's I went back and because awesome. well, didn't it, you you started it like something weird, right? You started in the middle of the second season or something because you didn't realize there was a, like previous seasons, and then you went back and watched it. Yep, yep. I caught it like a, just a weird like middle of the second season, and those yeah. the Brits, man, they're weird about about shows. Yeah, like that's weird about. Luther. Well, usually, yeah, they ha- they have a series over there. They have a series planned out A to B, and yeah. it's two seasons or it's five seasons, and they know like season two is only gonna have three episodes, and like two of those episodes are gonna be like a hundred and or an hour and a half, and then third episode is gonna be ninety or like forty five minutes. They do weird shit like that, but I yeah. I guess it's all by design. Whereas with Luther, they kind of broke formula a little bit, like they kept kind of eking life out of it like it was i think they originally planned just for like two or three and just to close that which would have been fine but um i've actually slacked on it i i i finished season three but i think there's like they did something weird like there's a fourth season and then they did like a weird like mini series like like a mini movie that they split into just two episodes um and then it's now hearing about this one it's been years since I watched Dude. it, I, I just remember loving it. And, and I kind of like that model better than when a show over here does well, the studio or network or whatever is like, all right, we're going to fucking ride this until the wheels fall off. And then by the end, it's like the show sucks now and it tarnishes yeah. the entire legacy. Because they don't, they didn't have it planned out in the beginning. And then they have the pressure to like pander to the audience, give them what they want, what made it popular. But, yeah. you know, may, that may have not been the view way back at the inception point. So yeah, that's what maybe why there's more like British shows that are, that are highly uh, uh, received and they only have two seasons or like two series, you know? And then it's like, that's it, you know, like, but yeah, over in the States, it's like, you find something, it's like fucking milk that cash cow for, and then that's how you end up. Yeah. Can we get a spinoff? Can we get, you know, more and more and more? Oh, dude, look at that fucking Yellowstone show, man. They had two good seasons, and now all of a sudden there's fucking 14 different shows (laughs) that are set in the past and the fucking future. And then, oh, don't forget this character's story's origin. I really like those first two, even three seasons. And now it's like, I don't, I'm fucking so over it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta leave them wanting more. Yeah. I I haven't caught any of that. I am a big Costner fan, but I, I just. It was on my radar for a minute, and I just forgot about it. And then, yeah, now there's five seasons of that. And I just saw, I just saw they released like a prequel of it in like 1888, and then yeah. another pre prequel, yep. which is in 1923, and then that, and then Dumb, Yellowstone. Dude. They're gonna do another, yeah, just like Walking Dead. They did a bunch of side shit on that, and then they're doing like two more and like a movie. It's like it's so hard yeah. to keep track of all of that shit, but. Also, another interesting one. I know I don't know if he's still out of the running, but Tom Hardy, his name was thrown in there too. I, I think he'd be a fucking cool Bond. It'd, it'd yeah. be cool. If if you're talking about like different directions, new directions, like 
Dude, his character. Adam Serba and Tom Hardy would be pretty rad. I know I've told you a million times that you need to watch Peaky Blinders, but his character in that show is so, so good. good. So fucking good. I know. Dude, Take care I... of my dog. You know I won't. <laughs> <That shit is. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's something on my like YouTube shorts algorithm. There's so many fucking Peaky Blinders like moments that come up and I just have to swipe past them because I'm like, one day I'm going to fucking start it and I don't want any of it. Like, dude, that and uh, Boardwalk Empire come up. Boardwalk those Empire are, is so sick. Those are two that I've never seen that I kind of have just like in the back pocket. I just it's keep funny. getting caught up with new shit. Like Last of Us. I'm on, I'm on a Last of Us kick right now. I've heard it's really good. I'm saving it because I want to watch it without having to it's, wait. But John, I'm curious good. what you think if I think Peaky Blinders started with the sort of British model of like, we're just going to tell the story beginning to end. And I think now it's gotten a little bit of the American treatment. Like, no, keep going. Because I don't know about you, but this sure. last, the last season was not really my favorite. I did not really give a fuck that much about the storyline. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think they're, I think they're done I didn't now. I mind it. The season, bef- it was the season before that one. The last season that I thought was okay. The one before this last season, I was not very in line with at all. Um, but that's a show I actually didn't even, my wife was watching that. And uh, one day I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? And she's like, oh, it's this. And then I was just sucked in. I think it. I think it's the third season with Adrian Brody and the Italian. Sub- yeah. Dude, it's so fucking good. God. Yeah. I'm so a big good. Adrian Brody fan. <laughs> then you will love him in this. Yeah. yeah and that, and Tom Hardy's character is just so fucking good, dude. Yeah. When he they, he lays on the horn on this one scene, it's just like they pull up and they're looking for the guy. And he's like, oh, hit the horn. And the guy's like, beep, beep. And he's like, he looks back. He's like, what? Fucking hit it. And he's like, oh, all right. And hits it again. He's like, for fuck's sake. And he just walks over there and just fucking lays on it. Just not. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking good. He's so good. You yeah, know, I just thinking about it real quick. I agree with you, actually. This season wasn't that bad. It was the one before that I was like, yeah, what, are we, before, what are we doing? Where are we going yeah. with this? This is not that totally. interesting. But yep. yeah. Yeah, I, that's one I, I've been meaning to get into for sure. There's another one with Tom Hardy called Taboo. Have you guys ever seen that? I guess it was produced mm-hmm. or directed by um, Ridley Scott, and it's a real funky role for him. That's like it was like he made Ridley Scott made it with Tom Hardy in mind. Like hmm. I want to have you. I think it was just like a he play, he made like a it was British. It was like a BBC thing, and they did. Uh, like a joint distribution on FX in like 2000, 2017. And they just did like two seasons, I think. And they planned it and then that's it. Uh, yeah. If you're a Hardy you- fan, I would I would implore you to watch watch the trailer for Taboo. That Taboo. show, it, it looks really fun. I add it to the list right now. What yeah. I understand about his role in Peaky Blinders, it seems like you guys would be into that too. Um, added to the list. I don't know who else, w- what other names were thrown around. I, th- I think, uh, what's his fuck? Uh, Loki from the MCU. Oh, Tom I don't know if I would like that. I would understand it. I don't know if I'd be a big fan oh. of that. But when you said I'm, Loki, I, I'm I would... a Tom Hiddleston fan. I like him. But <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little dubious about him as a Bond as well. Well, I think anytime, but like it's gotten to the point now when people are the superhero actors, I just, it's, it's, them drifting into other stuff is just, I don't know. There's a couple no names that have been thrown around too. And I'd almost rather go that for would be that. Sick. Cause yeah. that's what Daniel Craig was at the time. He wasn't yeah. in, I think the biggest thing right before it could have been even after that, but was layer cake. Have you ever seen layer cake? Layer cake sick. Yeah. Yeah. He's good in that. Uh, yeah. I, I wish I could say with certainty if that was before this, but I'm pretty I sure it was, it was before. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, I think that that was the biggest thing before Bond. So yeah, I think if you get someone that's yeah, kind of like an emerging like talent kind of thing would probably be best for the series. But yeah, I I can also see Aaron Taylor Johnson too. He's he's like the perfect mix of like he's been in shit, and so you got his notoriety. You got a built-in female fan base for sure. Yeah, uh, and then he's also really young, so you could. What if they had done like for ten years? What if they had done like Ronda Rousey like six years ago when she was still at her prime? I would have been fine with that. (laughs) Yeah, I, 
I, I'm I thought they were gonna go with um the get I don't want to get into later films, but there's a there's yeah a I gal, know I, I almost talked about it too, but I was like nah just leave it. There's a gal in later films I thought they were gonna go with and they didn't. Yeah, but uh, not just spoil or anything, but um, I would have been fine with that too because she, she's pretty rad in her own right. But um, yeah, I I mean we're in a we're in a new world. I I don't give a shit who does it so long as they like do a good job you know like, I don't well, know. it's just it's just not a i'm to me at that point it's a it's just it would be it's a different it's a different thing altogether like you can't have a a woman be james bond per se right <laughs> like what, what, what? like right. have it you know be it's she's a double o agent right if she wants you know give her the double o seven tag you know word but like i don't know i just it's uh i don't know that was one of those things when I was a kid. I was like James Bond, but this guy's different. I was like, how, like I would ask my right. grandfather, like, is he James Bond? Is that just the name? Like, and I, th- I think at the time his read on it was like, it's just a, it's something like you inherit, like, like that. His name is not actually James. He's like comes with the a dude, and he assumes the James Bond, and you become like just like you're the new Batman, or you're the new. Right you know, whatever you take on Mall that mantle Santa. where <laughs> Popo or Gijo. your grandpa's Chris like, <laughs> your grandpa's Paranoel. trying to explain to you. Uh, are you familiar with the band Menudo? They grow up, <laughs> they age out and new ones take over. <laughs> yeah. So that fucking scene, t- I love that scene too. That opening scene in the movie, like you're talking about like when they're getting, when he's getting the status and this kind of ties into like yeah. what you're talking about, right? Like it, him becoming the agent. Right. But when he's talking to that guy and that guy fucking sits down and slides his shit out and sees his gun still in there. And he's like, oh, I'd have known if you were a double O. And he's just like, oh, yeah. I got you, dog. Yeah. He's like, what does he say? Like benefits being section chief. I would right. have known yeah. if you've been promoted double O status. And then, yeah, I love how it's all in black and white too. And then it yes. cuts, it's like cold open. You don't get any of the fucking new, you don't so get the sick. gun, any of that, like staring down the barrel. It's like, and then hard cut to like him in the bathroom. Like that scene's fucking awesome. Yeah. Fucking that guy up going through the walls, dude. That shit was so sick. Yeah. They set the tone like right away. Like this isn't your daddy's bond. Like this dude's like a fucking rough, tough ass, like, yep like operator like he he's like yeah yeah that was like still the- to this day i say the yes considerably line like all i bring that up uh, anytime someone <laughs> would be like yes considerably yeah yeah and like Strong. see that's another theme like every other kill that you get under your belt numbs you or dulls you a little right. bit and it's easier to do like mm-hmm. you know that's some of the subtext you could pull out of this and he says it in kind of a cheeky way Right. Yes, considerably. Like, <laughs> That's so fucking sick, dude. And then I like how it cuts back, and it's like, oh, no, that dude's not dead, and they yeah, flip and it to the... Ah, yeah. Dude. Strong. Strong opening. I liked it a lot. <laughs> dude, and it's such a good... Like, I really... They always do a good job. Like, I know they all have their crazy intros, all the Bonds, right? But dude, I really like that, like, casino-themed, like, the poker and the roulette table, that yep. the intro that they do. That's one of my favorites out of out of all of them. Yeah, this one is awesome. What do you think about the song, Chris Cornell, Banger? It's funny because I I didn't have an issue with the song at all. I actually liked it. But other other people that I know were, like... I also didn't know Chris Cornell from uh, what is Soundgarden? it? Soundgarden. Soundgarden, right? And so when I remember talking about it with someone, and they were just like, "Oh man, fuck that solo Chris Cornell shit!" Yeah, and I was like, oh, "That was kind of cool, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty. I know about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, get it. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot too. Like, if you can yeah. separate, like the fucking early 90s grunge and fucking like spoon man corner you can't do it no. Steve, you're not a fan I can't. no it was yeah it was pretty it's it a, little too, too hokey, it was a, a little too hokey corn it was tough corn ball yeah did he die i can he see died, that too right? yeah 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 rest in peace uh well since we're not covering quantum of solace i mean I, we can talk i that one to me that intro 
And that song was, I was not a fan. That was terrible. I can't even remember it. Who, who it was, uh, the dude from what, what is it? White stripes, Jack, Jack. Something? Oh yeah. Fuck and Alicia that keys. Action. No, Nothing. him and Alicia keys. And it was like, uh, another way to die or some shit. It was not, it was not good. Sorry. Nope. Yeah, Adele's is pretty fucking rad. Goes pretty fucking yeah. hard for Skyfall. Uh, and the intro and that like uh you know the fucking uh, the vision piece that goes with it. Yeah. Fucking super good. Totally. Yeah, dude, I can't wait to talk about Skyfall. Man. Yeah. Skyfall's my, Skyfall spoiler alert is my favorite of all of these. Um Word. and it's it's really hard too because I I like all of the Daniel Craig films so it, like once I get through it and like, I have like casino Royale at like three right now, yeah. but that might change. Like over time I could see it jumping up to the two spot, but I'd be curious what's two for you. No time to die. No time to die. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was good. I, I liked it a ton actually. Ah, God, I want to talk about that one too. We're going to, we're going to save it for, we'll get there. For we'll that get there. One. But so, yeah. So, uh, bond, it's like him reemerge er, er, emerging as a double O agent for the first time. And then we cut straight to like, what is it? Mozambique or some, we're somewhere fucking exotic as shit. And it goes into like this crazy parkour scene. And yeah, it's the juxtaposition of like the hard headed fucking like bloke aspect versus totally. like this dude doing all this parkour, crazy, like elegant shit. Yeah. And like fucking, Daniel Craig's busting through drywall, whereas this guy's like slithering around and doing crazy parkour flips and shit. I thought, or he's like just commandeering a fucking huge ass like dump truck (laughs) and fucking up an entire work site. Like, I felt, yeah, every time I watch it, I'm like, dude, how much of a whore would that be to clean up and like, like, oh, dude, yeah, you got to get the drawing board, take up, dude. That is going to be. Yeah. It's almost like when he throws the gun at him too. Yeah. (laughs) Just that shit is so I love that shit. (laughs) Where he's up there up there at the top and he just fucking yeet. And he's just like bap, bap, and they go back at it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That that one is cool. The uh him going through the embassy, right? Like that I love that part. Like he comes in there and just kind of to see him like work the room, right? Like he's he's got the guy, they're going back and forth. And then the other guards are coming, they're dealing with them. And it's just like at one point he go, he dips into this one room and it's just like a bunch of like ladies and desk people. And they're all sitting there like, oh, what the fuck? And he just fires two in the he's just like, bop, bop. And they all just scatter. Right. And, and just to, to see him work a, around the people and see him like, as he's like hit like fire extinguishers and shit or like a, yeah, a pipe yeah. he sees that shoots off like a pressure yeah. blast of steam, you know? Yeah. yeah he's like surgeon. He's he's like dashing in headlong but also like in the moment making like these crazy like like split decisions that that Mm. seem pretty like orchestrated totally but he ends up like just killing this dude like right (laughs) uh blows up the embassy (laughs) yeah and so he gets a whipping for that and so like this is the first aspect of like him just going in balls out like ego and he has to get kind of like tamed a little bit mm-hmm. and then he's like all right yeah that was a fuck up it was in the news and shit and like and, and my my m judy played by judy dench who's awesome uh buses balls so he's like all right i gotta make up for this by breaking into her flat and <laughs> like- <laughs> well dude it seemed like he didn't even really care about it honestly like no. because he's in there and she's just like oh you sh- i can't remember she says something and he was like, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. One less bomb maker, you know, like he, he seems very like I, I love how she talks about how he knew that he was going to do what he does, you know. And then at the end of the movie, Vesper says the same. She she knew that he, he would do what he does. Mm-hmm. And so it's just it was because I always wondered this. And I'm curious what your guys' opinion of it is, is when he is at her house. Right. And he's on the laptop. And then he hears her coming and he dips off and he's fucking around with the cards. Well, then they have their whole exchange. Right. And, you know, you, you, uh, what did she say? Something about, uh, any thug can kill, you know, this may be too hard for a blunt instrument to understand. Yeah. You got to take the blunt instrument. Right. Right. But at the end of that scene, he leaves and she's, you know, she tells her, Hey, don't ever, you know, uh, I don't ever break into my fucking house again either. And he's like, yep, you got it. 
But then she looks over at the laptop. Does she, do you guys think, so does she know that he was on the laptop? I think so. I think so too. Yeah. She's a smart, and then that, yeah. she's a smart bird. And I think that's what she meant when she's like, I knew you would do what you do. Because remember he pops up, um, I was jumping ahead a little bit, but he, he pops up when he's at the uh, hotel and uh, they tell her, like they wake her up in the middle of the night and he's like, yeah, he's on the secured website using your name and password, checking shit out. <laughs> she's like, what the fuck? And then that's when he's like going through the list of people. But um, later on when she finally shows up and she give and uh, and she gives him all like he has all the toys and everything like or no, sorry. This is after the chick dies. Um, uh, the banker. Demetrios. Yes. Uh, or after, she- at, no, no. Demetrios. OK. And then uh, she it's because remember his his girl is in the uh, hammock all strung up in the hammock, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Solange. that's when they meet up again. Yeah, Solange. Yep. Yep. I was very and, I was very happy to discover she wasn't like the main girl. I just wasn't yeah. really digging her. So when she died, I was like, okay, that's fine. Better Moving chance on. for a boner alert. Like, she was Moving a on. dime. She was. She was. I don't know. I just I don't know. She had like a she had a really interesting like exotic mix like she looked like she had some like middle east like maybe iranian totally. or like yeah. uh like her voice like, annoyed me with like south america <laughs> kind of like she yeah she looked exotic as shit yeah, they were all fucking dimes and yeah. casino uh, every they, i was like oh yeah yeah uh mad's blonde haired swedish gal yeah. she's, yep, yep. And uh, Vesper, of course, sure. she's yeah. fucking. Yep. Yeah, she's Solange definitely was the, the uh, bronze medal winner of the three, in my opinion. Fair enough. Fair Wait, enough. Who? Uh, Solange. Dead hammock. Dead hammock girl is third place. Okay. Yep. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was it was it, it was, you know M, like you guys said, she doesn't she's not dumb, so she like kind of had this idea of what was going on, then sends him away, and then he pops up and. That's when he gets the tracker and she yeah. tells him, right? Like, I knew you were going to uh, because he tells her to drop the act, right? He's like, drop the act. You knew you fucking knew I wasn't going to let this go. Right. And then that's when she gives him the line. Like, well, I knew you would do what you do. Right. And so that's uh, that was that was always interesting to me. I think it's important to to point to not brush over like the Demetrio saying like him the ponying up to the uh, the poker table and taking oh, his yeah. car taking his oh, yeah. woman like just like just All of asserting it. but it's like he didn't really know that in the background he knew like yeah like this guy just played me for my car but mm-hmm. he didn't know anything else in the background but uh that kicks off like another like really intense like action sequence it's like there's really no let up i feel like no. in this movie which which is awesome like if that's what you're looking for too but um I like the the tense moments of him like trailing like the new contract guy that's gonna go in and bomb. Also in the background, we gotta point out that so Lashif is working with this dude named Mr. White, who's gonna come up in subsequent films as yep. well, who works for an organization we don't know about yet. Um and he keys in our main villain, played like by Mads Lashif, uh, to this Ugandan group. Uh that so Lashif like takes people's money and like you know there's some interest i think that he's playing with there that's he invests that makes it it, what's that he invests it he's an investor right but he's he's really taking that money and like doing like really crazy risky shit um yeah to come up so that's the way he operates so he takes like a hundred what is a hundred million yeah yeah from this ugandan warlord and then he has a bunch of stock in this jet it's this new sky jet or the company the the company that is just putting out this new sky fleet and so he put a bunch of put options so he's he's playing options on uh this company and knowing that he's gonna bomb it and make Mm -hmm. and it's gonna you know, get backlash and, you know, he's going to come up in the stock market. So bond that that's this whole scene where bond is chasing this dude down through the airport terminal and then saves the day. And then now the sheep's fucked because he just doubled down on all of his money, lost it all. Yep. Not only his, his shares are fucked, but he's lost all the, He's now in the pocket of this Ugandan warlord for a hundred million dollars. So he's right. got to think fast 
and that's what uh, thrusts us into the main theme of this movie, which is uh, uh, this poker game, this $150 million winner-take-all poker game. Yeah. Um, and poker wasn't quite at where it where it become. This movie really, I feel like this movie had a lot to do with poker fucking really busting in. I don't remember uh, Texas Hold'em being quite what it was. And then all of a sudden after this movie, I felt like everyone was, uh, you know, was trying to get into card games and was playing Texas Hold'em. Yeah. Uh, it's it's different to me too because I I don't know how many old films you've watched right but it was always baccarat that they played you know mm-hmm. what I mean that was always what he was playing in the casino and so you know it was cool to see this shift into this this poker and uh, yeah it's interesting if it was like chicken or the egg thing like because I know around this time I feel like Texas Hold'em and all that was kind of burgeoning so yeah, yeah. maybe it it could be you know maybe Casino Royale they saw that. And like, mm-hmm. hey, let's maybe try to catch this wave, or it yeah. was the other way around. Oh, maybe sure, they, yeah, that makes sense. Or they, you know, they they saw the potential for it, and it Casino Royal in turn helped it kick off. Vice versa, I think yeah. it's so close in that period of time and that like zeitgeist. It was just yeah. a, they were both a part of the same thing going in this direction, maybe. Yeah. Um, so the big, I just don't remember knowing like poker players names, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like yeah. they weren't stars quite yet. And yeah. I feel like after this, it's st- that's when you started getting all, you know, Daniel Negron, you Helmuth, all these, Hellmuth, Phil Ivey, yeah. all these yeah. names that were, you know, Mike Mattisau. And I, I feel like it was, it was right during that time period. So that, that makes a lot of sense though. I think it was perfect timing for the movie because the, the big online poker boom, well, mm-hmm. The the poker boom, the Texas Hold'em thing, I think it really started in like 04, 05. The online okay. boom was like 05 and then 06, which I think is when this movie came out. And yeah. so I think I think the movie was like, yeah, we're going to hitch our horse to this. Incorporate this. Um, yeah. And then it just kept going. And I don't think it stopped until there was some there was some legislation about where they really came down on the online poker websites. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, like the IEIA, like the internet, whatever. We don't want you gambling because we can't control the money act of right. 2000, whatever the fuck. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that, that's kind of what I thought too. Like I thought it was perfect timing to sort of fold in with the, the poker boom. Because yeah, when 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 I saw that they were playing poker, I was like, I thought they usually played Baccarat in Bond movies, yeah. but yeah. the timing, it, it ended up making sense, but... They they very much sex it up like they make they make uh, poker look sexy in this oh, film. Dude, I think those those fucking hands, yeah, dude. And yeah, I like man. to like I again I I don't know how I've probably seen this a baker's dozen times probably. Um, watching it again this time, I was like, it was a really good decision that they broke up the poker game into I think three kind of distinct phases of like we're playing poker and the right. like the dance of the mind thing going on here and yep. they they punctuated them in between like with perfect moments yeah. as well um one one thing like i love this film i it, i think it's almost a perfect movie uh for a lot of reasons like one for sure is like i always forget how long this fucker is but it, yeah. nev- it never feels like i'm stepping into a two hour and yeah. 25 minute movie um, not at all but the one kind of knock i wish they they kind of just gloss over is the introduction of i, I love the introduction of vesper and mm-hmm. uh james on the train and then kind of playing the dance of the mind and feeling each Screwed. other out playing their own poker game Yep. as it were on the train. Um, that was interesting too, because I, I know this isn't like, I, I there, there's other uh, instances of this trope where like bond kind of does like gets showed up in a way. And like, mm-hmm. like the, the bond girl uh, kind of like opens his eyes a little bit, but I think in this one, like he, he sees something in her uh, and th- that's like different. Like this isn't just like a standard lay. Like I think he's got his eyes on the prize for like from Jump Street with her, but he knows it's like a different animal. Or um, right. could I posit a theory that I just thought about? Yeah. Without flushing it out at all. Maybe since this is his origin story, 
this is why he becomes such a womanizer later on because the the oh, first yeah. gal he meets that he falls for gets burned so now he's like i'm just gonna slay ass yeah that's a good point that is yeah. a good point we'll see that's how that plays out in subsequent films too right but, um yeah that is a good point i didn't think about that dude um, the poker the poker stuff too it's it made me think i because you've told stories steve about uh dealers and shit right and fucking t- <laughs> dealing with tipping? these cocksuckers. Are you going to talk about tipping? How that motherfucker gets I, like a five hundred thousand dollar tip yeah. and it's like, thank you. Like, are you yeah. shit, are you shitting me? That pissed well, me dude, off. that so and bad. the fucking the Demetrios guy when they're playing right and he and she's like, it's uh, bets to you, sir. You know, and he's like uh, twenty thousand. She's like table stakes, sir. Yeah, he busts out his <laughs> checkbook. Yeah, throws the fucking like she just seems like a bitch, right? Like, yeah. And then like, so he's like, "Uh, please, you know, let him try to get his money back." And his car keys on the pot. Yeah, and she throws, like, throws the, and then she's like, "Oh, fuck it, then fuck." Yep. Yeah. And fucking, he has pocket kings, right? Fucking flop comes something a seven, right? And then the you know Bond has the the pocket aces, trumps him turn is he ends up rivering the king and that's when he fucking pushes right and uh and then he's like you know yeah that's fine let him win and she's like okay and so they push it all in he flips it over and then uh she's like pocket kings boo, 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 set triple trip kings and then bond trip flips aces, over the aces which is yeah, actually dude. wrong terminology because he had pocket aces it would only right. be trip aces if he had if he was holding one ace and he got two aces somewhere on the on the and board. That's fucking nerdery right there. But um But the way she says it, Doc, it just made me think of Steve so hard. Because she's like uh <laughs> Trip Kings. And then like you could tell she just had something with Demetrios. Like they just weren't fucking vibing, right? And then the, she like the way she hits the table and she's like and he flips him over and she's like, Trip Aces. Yeah. Aces win. Well yeah. <laughs> Because earlier, <laughs> when Bond, when Bond's trying to figure out who this guy is, he's like, oh, I'm, I think I nicked his door, and I just I want to yeah. f- figure out who he is, you know. And she's like, if he doesn't know, I wouldn't mention this to yeah. him. So yeah, it seems like he's got a reputation as being a real cocksucker at that fucking place. Totally. But, well, I just the way she, I was like, Steve is one thousand percent dealt with a dealer. Oh, sorry, sir, twenty one again. <laughs> I'll take oh. you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> When I like when when he's pulling all the money, he's like your valet ticket. Like he's like, oh yeah, your valet. It's not valet. it's not oh, enough that I took all your money in your car. I'm gonna need that ticket too, so I can get. Oh, your yeah, car. I'm about to go fucking. Yeah, then yeah, bags his wife right, right after that. that. I love that scene where he's like, oh yeah, my my house is just up the road or whatever, yeah. and he gets in the car and fucking just yeah. in the, in that roundabout, and he's like, welcome to my home. Like yeah. and she's like, he's like, yeah, I got it. Secured the one bag. drink. Yeah, that shit is, yeah. Dude, I've it's, been through there. Little Ox is fine, town. Um, so, yeah, I guess jumping from that uh, into, so we'll go to, where is this again? Is this? Uh, That's in the, we, we were already kind of past it. It was past that, but. Well, wh- wh- where the, the poker, the the poker tournament. The big game? Yeah. Is this Montenegro? Yeah. Okay. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. The the going back to the one knock I have is so he links up with so Vesper and then um what's this fuck uh Mathis yes mm-hmm. who this this guy actually grows on me throughout the series um, Mathis yeah but uh so he links up with him who's like his local side contact that's like on the good team yeah, yeah. and is helping him and like facilitates shit or whatever gets him like where's he getting all these fresh fucking shirts too like he's like he's going through like a week's wardrobe just getting battered <laughs> and blood and fucking booze all over his shirts and shit um booze broads and bullets <laughs> Giancarlo Giannini uh yeah when he sets up like it because it seems all like happenstance so like at one during one of these breaks in between the action at the poker table mm-hmm. uh bond like overhears like some shit going down in the chief's room right and uh he kind of goes to like see what's going on and intercede and he gets caught up in this mix because one of the ugandan um like his his henchman sees uh, Bond's got like a wire or like an earpiece. Right. So like they duke it out. Like, like that was just 
dumb luck that they found each other because they don't have any beef with Bond, but one dude's packing a fucking crazy, like, dragon mouth machete shit, which that that was pretty badass intimidating yeah. weapon but uh they fight it out in the stairwell and then after he kills these two dudes in the stairwell mathis our handler for bond on the on the european side here takes those bodies and puts them into the trunk of the police chief of montenegro knowing that he is in the pocket of Le Chief and that you know potentially Le Chief could come down on bond by using well, I think I the, think you might be the police confusing. chief, and then Mathis is like, "Well, now you don't have any problems, and you have to look over your sh- one one less thing to look o- over your shoulder." It's like that kind of seemed half baked to me, like the way it just well, like it's probably all threw you're together full real wrong. Quick. Yeah, no, I'm what, wrong. What you're thinking of is when he first first meets Mathis, he's looking over mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, Lashif is friends with this guy who's the police chief," and then the other cops come in and they're like, uh, "We planted some evidence on him." that he's doing whatever malfeasance. That we're bribing him. Yeah, so they arrest him. Uh, okay. But the, the two bodies in the trunk, I'm actually unsure as to whose tr- car that was. Maybe just an associate of Lashif because he's looking out One the window. One of Lashif's bodyguards, guys, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's just like right. they're, I'm an they're idiot, just like man. tightening the noose a little bit more around him, like his friend. The right, pol- like you lost the police chief, losing one of your bodyguards. And you that's kind of where the an- he keeps raising the ante- uh, metaphorically with then he's like, okay, well, fuck, I'm going to poison you now, Bond. Yeah, you fucking dude, asshole. Fucking scene is such a boner alert, man. Right <laughs> <there. Fuck him. laughs> boner alert! Yeah, this, this scene is like like one of those like scenes that's like tense. Like I remember the first time watching it, like being like, oh, I still, shit. when I see it, I'm still like, fuck, dude. Hit the button, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the bloody button. Yeah. <laughs> Do it now, Bond. Uh, yeah, that whole scene. I I love too where how it shows like how badass he is too. Like he's like, okay, fuck. I just I took a drink off of the shit with poison and it starts yep. hitting him, and he immediately yep. fucking like gets up and he's like drunk man. Like he got the the wobble, the sidewalk, and he grabs the cup, some water, and the table salt. salt the salt goes yeah. into the bathroom to kick in the fucking gag reflex to like throw that shit up. And then he's like cut to, hard cut to crossing the street. He yeah. Gets, like all fear and loathing him. style. <laughs> yeah. He gets like glanced by a car. Like yeah. that couldn't have fucking felt good. Um, dude, the sheer amount of punishment in like, I don't know, a 36 or 48 hour period that this motherfucker goes through yeah. is like pretty intense. Once you start stacking up, all like the bodily harm that he's like just absorbing fucking a dude. But yeah, then he goes out of his car and he's got to like fucking like jumpstart his heart and jam some yep. shit into his neck. That's super pen, tense. Yep. And then like, there's another scene even before this when after he kills those two henchmen, like Ava green who plays Vesper is like fucking freaked out and they're all in the shower and they're like wet. And like, mm-hmm. I can't remember. I, isn't there like, it seems like there's a daybreak in between the final sit down. Yeah. Before I always felt like it's just like bang, bang, bang. But this time I was like, no, there's a clear, like there's, cause that's what you were talking about with the dudes in the trunk that happens. I believe before the third day. Yeah. Because I remember specifically, I was like, it's daylight out. And I was like, the gaming was happening at night. So right. Yeah. This, this actual like poker tourney, this game is like stretched over maybe a two, maybe a three day period. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's another punctuation in between the three main games. So the second game that he sits down to play is like he thinks he's got uh, the Chief's tell right down. And so this is kind of like the arc, you know, like the hero goes in with ego okay. and then he comes into this spot and he fucking gets whipped and he gets he like questions everything. He's got to fucking like regroup. And then mm-hmm. you come back to the third game and... He's he's got the juice now, you know, like he Right. What do you think of the uh the kind of rug pull of like, oh, you think he's got him on the ropes, but it's like nope, he he just bluffed his tell. Like he knew that I or was like that a, a lucky guess? Watching? No, he had the tell, right? Because he, he that was the tell. It's just Lashif's able to he was able to outmaneuver him because he was able to get that information because he 
the way he explains it too, it's like he totally had it. He got it right, and then he goes down there and he's like, "Yeah, the guy fucking river ratted me. His odds were like twenty three point something, you know, like uh, the fact that he won was just pure luck." And so he tells that to Vesper and Mathis, right? And so which which I think was a real tell. That's what he had the read on him, but because. Mm-hmm. You know, they're able to tell the sheep now, like, yo, hey, Bond knows you're you're doing this in this hand. And so he's able to use that to 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 pull Bond into that. Uh, I can't remember what he, it was like, fucking quad jacks or some shit. Right. It yeah. Was something like that. And he beats uh, him with a royal fucking flush. Like, come on. What are the chances? Oh, dude, that's insane. That last hand. That's the that that's after he buys back in. But, dude, I have that down. Uh let me see real quick. Poison scene, poison scene, fucking one of my favorite scenes of all what, time. What do you think of this poison scene? Did you was it did you feel like the the tense the the intensity and like the like the the danger in this one me? Steve? Steve, oh, Steve yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean when when the waitress has like it looked like the two martinis on the tray and she poisons the one and then she brings it over I was half expecting like a princess bride switcheroo, like yeah. whichever one, whichever one she gave yeah. to him. He was like, no, thanks. I'll take the other one and then just see what happened. And then when he drank it and he starts to get all fucked up, like, oh, no, this is this is not good. And this is bad. Yeah. But even even just the, the scene with the control room, that's like uh, he's dying. You know, this is bad. I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, how it was like cutting back and forth to like the doctors and even the two doctors, there's just disagreement. That one's like, he's like, no, he's got to take this for the digital yeah. first. Yeah. It's like his heart's going to stop. You got it. Yeah. That one was sick. Um, yeah, that, that, that last hand though was fucking dog. Imagine that you're in a table with, at a table with four dudes, right? And everybody gets such a fucking massive piece of this board. First guy has what? It's like a, I think it's like nut flush or something, right? It was like king high flush. Next guy gets boat. Next guy has a higher boat. Higher boat. And then you, and then you lose to a straight flush. Like yeah. that is like a gambler's fucking wet. Dr- like you can't, you can't hope for a better sequence than that. Like right. everybody thinking they just have such a, a monster piece of this pot. Yeah. But if you yeah. think about it too, it's like, could you really go any other way? in like a bond film and for like, right. Like, no. yeah, it's, it's, it's not the end of the movie, but it's definitely, you know, like it's, it's a key piece here, but uh, yeah, that, that part's so satisfying. Then to kind of put yourself in the shoes of Le Chief, like, fuck man. Yeah. Like I fucked the, the airplane up. Now yeah. this, although I don't know if he knows, but the Ugandans are taken care of for now. Right. So he, he thinks he's, I don't know if he knows that, but if he does, okay, I'm cool on that front. And now I'm just pissed and I want to kill yeah. this fucking guy. Um, well, and I feel like we haven't really talked about Felix at all either. No. Uh, and I want to, I didn't want to brush by him either, dude. Jeffrey yeah. Wright, Felix Leiter. I love this guy. At, yeah. at the time, I, I don't know what he's been in before this. Me and neither. I thought he was just kind of some side character, but there was something about him that endeared me to him and I totally, I, I liked his character and I'm glad that he showed up. He sh- he shows up in subsequent movies as well. This guy actually, he went on to go. I, he's like my favorite character in Westworld. I don't know if either of you two mm-hmm. have seen Westworld on HBO, but I haven't seen it, but I know he's in it. He's fucking awesome in it. Like it's like his chance, like his breakout, but yeah, I love Felix in this dude. And that was another thing that they there was a big change up, right? Because yeah, because he was, was always like a white dude, goofy white dude, like yeah, in, in that, all the like other the American. Bonds. He was the American James Bond, basically, you know, right. CIA. Um, and then the like the when he cues in on it, uh, I love that scene with the with the drink, and he's like, uh, "Send the barman over, right?" And then he oh, like yeah. goes off on this fucking crazy. He's like, "Wait, hold up." I want it three measures of Gordon, blah, 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 uh, shaken uh, over ice with a thin slice of whatever that fucking fruit is. Dude, that's another way it subverts the like the old formula of like, you know, like, you know, martini shaken, not stirred, like Bond, James Bond, all that shit. Like they broke from that. Like he doesn't even say the the line until the end of the movie. But yeah, I like how he's like, you know, he orders the standard Bond and he's like, no, wait, check that. Come back. Yeah. And it's, uh, 
Three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure yeah. of Pinot Lillet. Shake it very well until it's ice cold. Then add a large, thin slice of lemon peel. Got it? And then all, yeah. everyone else at the table is like, ooh, I'll have one of those. Like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, and Felix is the best. <laughs> He's like, friend, bring me one as well. Hold the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Well, yeah, many orders one that. later, and they're like, "Do you want it chicken or stirred?" He's like, "I don't." That's yeah, I don't like, give a shit. Like He's like, "Do I look like I give a damn?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chicken or stirred, sir. Do I really look like I give a damn? That's so another pro- way too. Like you could look at that, like you know, like you're thumbing the franchise of like right, you know right. the key, like shaken, not stirred, or you like you're right. you're not paying homage. But I think they are by like I think so too. Yeah, showing that rough edge, like this is a new bond. It's like you know he's he's like yeah fuck that you know like give or me the drink you know again once again because this is the origin story maybe he's tried to order this overly complicated drink so many times. That eventually he's like, just give me a fucking martini and just shake him, please, because I can't ask or you to do these complicated measurements. It's attached to Vesper, too, because he names right. it the Vesper. But I think in, in subsequent films, doesn't he, do you find him drinking that again? Maybe not. Anyway. Yeah, he's, yeah he drinks it in Quantum of Solace. Yeah. He can't fall asleep. Got it. Wow. But yeah, Wait, I can see that. Like, ruining the movie. It, and like, that's why yeah. he went to just regular ass <laughs> martinis because it, like yeah. the pain, like the memory of her was too much, but totally. Um, oh, ho- sorry. Also, baseball. Uh, um, I thought we, we, I thought it was very weird. Kind of in the same vein as this, what we're talking about. I thought it was very weird when uh, Vesper and Bond first meet. Their first interaction, she sits down and says, I'm the money. I'm the money. He says, every, every penny. penny. Yeah. Money, ah, penny. Nice. Yeah. Ah, stupid. Little money, <laughs> penny. I thought that was uh, <laughs> you fucking dick. Uh, I thought that was. Uh, you are a coward, son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, Another one of those weird things, like, uh, just like, uh, like you're talking about, an homage to the. Because Money Penny was always trying to get that D, bro. She wanted that shit bad. She acted like she didn't know. Yeah, I dude, and those square <laughs> chips, those square <laughs> chips were fucking sick, dude. dude I love yeah, that. I, that uh, whole poker set just looked so fucking nice. I never seen like uh, uh, I've always ju- they're always just you know regular p- poker chips, but those those red and blue squares, that shit looked clean. Yeah. Here's five hundred thousand million. Like it just. Those yeah, you could chip. tell that was like a higher echelon of chip. Like, oh shit, yeah. that's like those are the the big racks. Um, yeah. Fuck, I was just gonna say something. I forgot. Damn it. My bad. No, no, it's not your fault. Oh, get it. <laughs> not even the right bump I wanted either. <laughs> um, one of my favorite. I think we're getting there, so this is kind of like a I'm telegraphing it. But can either of you guess what my favorite part of this movie is? When uh, Daniel Craig gets naked, <laughs> that would be my guess as well. <laughs> well, we just glossed over the beach scene where he's in those fuck those baby blues yeah, and bomb ass trunks, bro. <laughs> Your boy did just fucking meat, man. <laughs> that look good, man, dude. Yeah, I know that was a big thing too. Like fucking like women, even to this day. Like, like if my grandma was still alive, that would probably be on her fucking like in her room, pinned up. But yeah, I know people <laughs> women went wild for that part. But no, it's. Do you really know? Can you really guess I, what my favorite part is? You're um, on the right track. He is naked. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, that's yeah. The fuck. ball scratching. Not uh, yeah, the yeah. whole world. That is that. That is I have that written down as one. That's like five scenes of all time. That is in my list of top five greatest scenes ever. That's that's yeah. I love each part. You know, like no, no, like (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Or even when he begins, he's like, he's like, oh, you want to tell me something? He's like, I've got an itch, dude. I watched this movie with with my grandpa. Who I uh-huh. I thought he was gonna shun it because this was after it came out and he hadn't seen it like he yep. didn't go to the theater anymore or anything but uh, I had seen it so I knew it was coming and I watched like when it came out on DVD we watched it and I thought he was gonna shun it you know being like an old school like purist, purist. Like, seen yep. every old one you know and he fucking laughed his balls off at this part Dude. too we were both just it rolling so, so 
it was a really fun memory for me too, but just like, it's such a power move and just like a slice, like the perfect kind of levity or like comedic part that would fit a bond film is him also pulling like a power move, just like fucking like, yeah, fuck you, you know, just sticking it to him. Like (laughs) the the timing of it is too. Yeah. Yeah. Like he plays it off perfectly. Like, yeah, he he gives him the chuckles. Oh, you're a funny man, Bond. Yeah. And, he just, ah, and then when he dick. says, you know, because when all those people come back for you or whatever, they're going to chop you up into little pieces and hygiene. He's like, you are so wrong. Like, dude. Yeah. He's triggered to the moon, dude. Yeah. That's where, yeah, like a good, I think it's, it's like passed over, but like you think you got to get a, a really good villain to like match that, like, yeah, you know, back and forth. And I think dude, especially in hindsight, going to see like what uh, Mads Mikkelsen has gone on to do. And I like how much I like him as an actor, like seeing them relatively young in, in their like breakout period and just like mm-hmm. going to war with each other is pretty awesome. Um Yeah. The chief is fucking one of my favorite Bond, you know, like villains. He's just so so good. Uh, when the when he's playing poker on the boat, and that guy, he, he's like when he cleans up, it, he's like, "Oh, don't worry, tears of blood. It's uh, merely a deranged tear duck. Nothing sinister." I assure yeah. you. <laughs> Shit is so sick. Yeah, the, the way he like turns his head and says. Nothing sinister, I assure you. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, no, that's the most sinister fucking thing. Someone <laughs> yeah. bleeding from yeah. their eye, and you're a villain. Yeah. And one of the other eyes, like, it's kind of cloudy. It's like you look exactly like the yep. prototypical Bond villain, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. What, he what's he say? Weeping blood comes merely from a derangement of the tear duct, my general. Right. My dear general. And then what's he say? He's like, he gets the news and he's like, yeah. Oh, they're not gone in five minutes. Throw them overboard. Yeah. But then he's like, just like dispatched, like unceremoniously. Cause at that point too, you're like, fuck bond. Yeah. You got a good chuckle out of the guy or for yourself, but when, like, yeah. what's the play now, dude? Like, are you going to be felt fed your fucking cock and balls? It's like, you don't really close, see dude. how he's going to get out of this, you know? And then right. our boy, Mr. White shows up and fucking busts the cap and yeah. Because and I think it's I don't know if it's said or it's implied later on that you find out. I don't know if Mathis is serves as like the info dump, but saying that in not so many words, the reason that happened was because they knew they couldn't at that point they couldn't trust the chief and they wanted to make oh, sure that's all what their he, investments yeah. are sound, you know, this shadowy yeah. organization in the background. Mr. White tells him that right before he shoots him. Okay. Yeah, I could right. Because he, he, he tells him he's like, I can. He's like, I can get the money, all of it. Right. And he's like, yeah. it's not as important as to who our uh, organization can trust. Right. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, and then yeah, I like this movie too because you think it's about to end, like, oh, okay, here and then here and here, but it's not right. like, fuck, why didn't they end it? You know, back at that scene, you know, so it's it, yeah, it's totally. a good balancing act of kind of like baiting you a little bit, but it's still like delivering because then the like the last set piece is in. So we're in Italy. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like this is where Bond like lets his guard down completely. Like he's just like, yeah. like, OK, everything's cool as fuck now. I'm with Vesper. Right. right we're good, you know, and then he doesn't even see it coming like the betray the like just another layer of bullshit that he's got to go through and this shit like i wondered like like even for 2006 i mean this is like pretty dope cg level for bringing that building down like i'm trying to think about it now watching it i was like how the fuck do they actually do that like yeah with the it looked very popping and like yeah Yeah. all of it 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 looks like they brought down one of those fucking homes like right (laughs) or like one of those like abodes that are on this like key in Venice, I'm assuming, because of all yeah. the water. Okay. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah. So there's water, was... gondolas must be Venice. Yeah. <laughs> and they also said it several times, but this was my other uh point of confusion that it might just be me being dumb, but Okay, so this is part two that you alluded to at the beginning. All right. Yeah. So and when it... when Bond and Vesper start sailing through town in the canal, mm-hmm. she looks over and sees the guy with the one shaded sunglass yeah. and she's like oh shit recognize this guy whatever and i He's even had clearly to clearly german 
And I had to go look this up in the synopsis because my first thought was like, is that Shafri? Is he still alive? Because Shafri, Le Chiffre. Le Chiffre. Because it's his left eye. And if you if you had a clouded, fucked up left eye, you'd be in public with sunglasses with one that was, you know, shaded over. So when I looked it up, it said uh, Bond follows Vesper to a secret meeting where she turns money over in cash to a man named Gettler. Who the fuck is Gettler? Am I supposed to know That's who he is? That's the guy from with the eye patch, and his first name is Adolf. Well, the guy like, I know the guy is clearly German. I know the guy with the the shaded sunglass. Was he there earlier with an eye patch? I don't know. This is the first I noticed of him pop up here in the, the it final seemed, act. It seemed unnecessarily confusing to show a guy with a it, fucked up did, left yeah. eye. Yeah. It Maybe they were trying to sh- red herring or throw you off with Le Chief having a fucked up eye too. Like, I don't know. I didn't really think about it. Um, now that you bring it up, I didn't think about it with the eye. But that, uh, I don't know why I just never, like, I just accept Le Chief is dead and like this, we've, we've moved on yeah, with I the movie. Too. But, um... It is very confusing because I still couldn't tell you. I don't. I, I I've watched all of these movies a, a several times, and that character. I I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, no a idea bunch of shit me. happens here, like where like they get the winnings and it's supposed to go back in the treasury, and a guy comes to sign off for that, and then right. Vesper, and then Vesper's like, like they're they're about to embark. Her and James are about to embark on some fucking river cruise tour fuckathon mm-hmm. and uh she's like i'm gonna go get some supplies and sundries um and she takes off <laughs> and that's when she's making the play of like now i'm funneling this back to uh this these crooked fuckers um that's so arrogant that's screw off yeah and, and all so that, there's all that a scene made sense where, but it was no just, i did too it, yeah I guess that's kind of like summarizing where we're at, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of just took that guy's face value, like bad guy, just a money man, just an in-between money guy, basically. Yeah. Like working. I, Cause I didn't, yeah. Mr. White I don't was know. Working with like, right. Right. Just generic. Well, she leaves him that information money. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, so how does Vesper he, leaves that? How does he know? He doesn't, he get a call from like MI6 and they're like the fucking, the the funds haven't been deposited yet like what's going oh, on yes yes that that he he so the whole like, it, he goes follows her gets her there and then the part what i thought you were going to say steve because this always confused me forever too uh not just that guy but the whole ending because they bring up there's it just feels like such a crazy information dump that lasts like 20 minutes of the movie yeah um because you know he thinks Mathis is a bad guy, yeah. And right. then she, yeah. and then she's like, "Well, it turns out it was Vesper this whole time, uh, you know." So Mathis is clear, and he tells her, "Nope, fuck no, we don't know that Mathis could still be a bad guy just because you know she was." But what was always confusing to me was how he he got all that information to get to Mister White, and then that's when this time around, this is one of the first times I noticed it. But M says that line again to him. She's like. Vesper, she knew she was probably going to her death. Like she made a deal. She's like, do you, did you ever wonder why you left that room that night alive after Mr. White killed Lashif? You know, it was clear that Vesper made a play with the money to get them the money back in exchange for your guys' lives. And so he, and, and then he also tells M he's like, it's, she knew I would check her phone. Like she left her phone there. She knew I would look at it. And she's like, yeah, Vesper knew you would do what you do. And then he goes into the phone and then that's, uh, when he threw uh, Vesper's phone, he finds that email and it's like for bond or for James. Yeah. And then it's Mr. White mm-hmm. with Mr. White's number. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's my problem with that because I heard all that too, but from yeah. from Vesper's point of view, they still didn't have the password. So when he's when he's convalescing in Italy, she goes mm-hmm. there. I don't think she made any deal in the in the torture scene because from her point of view, all all she's trying to do is save her boyfriend by getting the money, right? Right. So when she goes to Italy and, and he's convalescing, she's still just trying to get the password from him. Right. See, I think I thought she won. I think she made a switch. I I think she really did plan to be with him. Um, uh, 
and I think that I think part of the I don't know this could just be more uh, bullshit, but I think that's also kind of symbolized in the movie when he specifically they mentioned the love knot, right? And he's like, "You're not wearing it anymore." And she's like, "Yeah, you know, it's a you know I've realized to to let things in the past be." Or so she says some shit up about that, yeah, because yeah. before she always had that on, and I mean that could you know just movie nonsense bullshit, right? Well, but I, I I think this that's the play in the story. I kind of took it differently as he knew that she had a dude. And so mm-hmm. she took it off. Like, I don't want him to think I have a dude for whatever reason. I I want to agree with you, John. But the reason, if that were true, then why did she sacrifice herself at the end? Like, she's like, because there's a distinct point where she's like, fuck it, you know, and she starts right. screaming and she there. lets all of her air out. Like, and, yeah, and yeah. even before that, too, she fucking pulls the the like cotter pin that's holding that fucking yep. like she, he could have opened it right then. So to me, there's a sense of guilt. I mean, obviously she, she yeah, can't clear it. Yeah. That makes face sense. It. Yeah. So, but then it's more confusing because then it's like, okay, if her play was like, was she just playing that organization by telling them? Yeah. F- fuck my boyfriend, you know, whatever that I have on the side, not James. Um, I'm going to give you this money and you spare James. Mm-hmm. But if she did that, then why, w- why was she so quick to kill herself or like let herself go? Yeah. That's a, that's a good thought process. I, I because before, otherwise it would be like, okay, you save my, my other boy, my real boyfriend, not James, mm-hmm. you save him. And I'll give you the 150 million. Right. Then why would they leave James Bond alive? Like sure. he's this big threat. Like, wouldn't they have, I don't know. I just know that. Well, and the other reason I bring it up, right. Is because I mean, that's what M says in the movie. Yeah. She says, don't you, don't you realize she did that and saved right. you? But right. Well, maybe, maybe I'll contradict myself and go back over to John's point of view where maybe she did actually start to fall for James. And she just felt so bad about it. She's like, I'm just going to fucking kill myself. I don't want to go back to my just in this triangle. Yeah, that obvi- <laughs> yeah, that's that's the third option for sure. But it just seems so like weird. Like, you're, sure. you, like that seems like a, a betrayal kind of thing that you could explain away. Like if you got out of it, you know, like, yeah, you could explain it. You could be like, yeah, I did have a boyfriend if I could tell you about, but I fell in love with you and fuck him. Like, I, I do really like you and I'm alive now. So let's go. Yeah. But it, yeah. it's like, yeah, the, I, I guess that part's a little more uh, that I have an issue with, like her just being like, fuck it. You know, even even before the end, because you see him, he kicks open that door. Like if if she would have held on a little bit more for air, she could have got out. But it's before yeah. that when she pulls that pin yeah. and that drops the drops. like that seals her fate. Um, because right then, she, like if she could have just got out right there, like. Right. fuck like dealing with the struggle underwater so yeah i i mean but it is it is uh plausible perfectly plausible too that it's just like that sense of guilt and like not wanting to like face up that she had another boyfriend i don't know it just no i i think i think her guilt was from betraying someone who bond yeah someone who she originally was going to betray but then ended up falling yeah. for him and then i still i still feel like she could have like at least tried yeah you no, know, I, to I agree with ex- that too explain that away but i mean you take that away and then you take away the emotional impact and then the whole trajectory of bond of for the, the rest yeah. of the fucking series you know because he does like spoiler alert bulk of the series spoiler, dude like he, he i mean this death is an important moment yeah throughout the rest of the series, like him losing Vesper. Um, yeah. And that's the other thing too. Like I, I that it brought like real emotion to like, it grounded the movie like more in like out of this fantastical kind of James Bond into like a, a flesh and blood dude. Who's like mourning the loss and then him very quickly having to fucking turn it back on. He's like, fuck that. I'm ready. Let's go. You know, like that bitch is dead. And he's like, I'm just going to fucking, dive into my work and and be fucking james bond and then that that sinks us up like he gets that last little tidbit and he goes right to mr white and he's like all right i'm here to fuck shit up and blast him in the leg and 
And then that's right. when you get our final, like, it's like he's emerged. He's, he's come out of the chrysalis. It's like, he's James Bond. Now he's like Bond, James, James Bond. Bond. Bonnet. Yeah. Da, na, na, na. Dude, that, um, I just, I was looking back to what I had written down. Uh, that fucking the uh, where was the guy? Where was the guy who was holding all the money? Where was he from? Belgium or Switzerland? Switzerland, yeah, Switzerland. Uh, the guy with the 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 main banker, right? Dude, that guy was hilarious to me. And when Bond's at the end there, and he he pulls up and he has it, and uh, we transfer he has the briefcase. He's like, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> And he, he tells him, he's like, oh, I, was, I was expecting you to show up with chocolates. <laughs> and then the, the guy looks at him and he's like, oh, not today. <laughs> and then the, the way Bond looks at him, he's just like, fucking weirdo. <laughs> it's a corporate kiss, but man. You Swiss fuck. Oh, dude, that, that guy was hilarious. Oh, not today. <laughs> um, I guess in the interest of like, since we're skipping over um, Quantum of Solace, do you think there's any way we could like nutshell it in like 30 seconds before no, we jump I, I kind of want to watch it. Do yeah, you? Yeah, you should watch okay. it. You should watch it. Okay. It's, me, a, it's, it, it, it's not bad. It, it seems like, it, I mean, it really, it, it is, and this isn't giving anything away, that Quantum of Solace happens like literally like end to end. It's like two big ass movies cut in half, basically. Yes. Like you pick up immediately from the end of yeah. this movie right into quantum of solace. So, okay. um, it's kind of, to me, it's like a side quest movie. Um, and then you come back into the main story mm-hmm. at Skyfall. Um, I think you'll, li- I think you'll like it, Steve. I really do. It's, uh, I had some issues with it initially off the get go because it was, I didn't like, they use a lot of CGI in that, in that one. There's a couple of, there's a, a lot of sequences and it just, Something about it at the time, I was just like, man, that's not James Bond. That just that feels weird. Yeah. And then um, it was one of the first Bond movies. It's less than two. It's like an hour 40. It's a it's a short movie. Oh, really? And oh. yeah, most most Bond films are, you know, easily two plus hours. Yeah. Um, and this this one is this one. It's a lot shorter. Uh, and when this one came out, I, I, this was that was what? Oh, eight. Oh, nine. So yeah, I would have been, you know, like 19 at the time. Like I was just like, man, fuck this. It's not, you know, it's not a bond movie. It's fucking under two. Hours. Like I just had this <laughs> weird view on it. Yeah. And then, you know, you get, you grow up, you get older and like going back and watching it. And it's really not, it's not that bad of a movie. I didn't, I'm not a big fan of the villain. I think that, uh, the has villain's a pretty a big fucking hit. Fucking weasel. Yeah. Um, that, that aspect of it was a little hard to deal with, but it's, it's, it's still a good movie. Okay. I do like, uh, I'll check it out. I guess I'll wait till Sky. We, we get into Skyfall. If I, if I, we, we do like a little one minute gloss over like, uh, Cliff's notes of quantum of solace, but yeah, it's it's definitely a a side quest type of movie. And I, I didn't want to dedicate an entire episode to it, but I agree. It's, it's one that, um, Upon like rewatch and like revisit like these years after, it's not as uh, lambasted as it was because I think there was such high expectations. I mean, you think about Casino Royale and like how groundbreaking for oh yeah, like just a film in general, how good it was, and then also for a Bond film, and then so I mean there was nowhere except like you know the stratosphere for the expectation level to be for the follow-up to that. And I think that hurt it because I mean, it's not, it's not casino Royale. Um, Mm -hmm. So that hurts it right off the bat and having that kind of expectation. But I think if you think about it, like now seeing all of like the entire Craig era films as a whole, um, it's an interesting story. Like I like the stuff with Mathis and him um, Mm -hmm. a lot, like made me respect him more. But yeah, the villain is kind of shitty, but yeah, I like, I like his just desserts as well, but yeah, it, it's nowhere near as bad as people crack it up to be. And um, yeah, just for the interest of like not wanting to dedicate an entire episode to it and just like the flow. Um, yeah. I think, I think we can slide into Skyfall. No problem right after that. But yeah, yeah. for you, just like on a personal note, note if you wanted to go into like watching the whole series and having a perspective of the Craig era, I think it is, it won't hurt you to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And there are key pieces too that come in from movie two into movie five. You yeah. Know? So um, and it's not a crazy long watch either. You know, it's one that we could honestly, uh, but on this guy, like you're talking about in the Skyfall episode, Steve, if you want to watch it, uh, you know, watch it and then we can bang it out in fucking 10 to 15 minutes. Just like this is what it is because it, it to me, it does set up Skyfall nicely. It does. Yeah. And then Skyfall to me, Skyfall is like, even though it's, it's still a Bond film and it's, and it's in this uh, Daniel Craig era, I feel like it, it, it's like another, it's another jump into, Definitely. uh, you're in a different plane, you know, kind of to sound kind of fucking hokey about it, but, um, it's still, it's got that, that new style, that kind of more born gritty, like fast action, yeah. like, uh, kind of thing but it it also has an uh an an undercurrent of uh like looking into the past and then like getting to know like james bond the person more instead of like the mantle which i like about uh this series like as it concludes like you're more focusing on the person and not like not the mantle um which is what i i liked about this guy's run but um cool do you mind if i share put up a couple quick pieces of trivia, and then I have my favorite Conti review. Yes. All right. So uh, there was no shortage of trivia about this movie, most of which I found Fuck to time. be increasingly boring and uninteresting Monday, to, yeah. to me. I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot of like Bond, Insider, crossover stuff that might be interesting, but... Uh, yeah, if you're a Bond fan, dude, you go on the IMDb for this thing, holy you're Christ. fucking... Scrolling. All right. So <laughs> the first one I thought I thought Jim in particular would like. I'm sure he already knows it, but uh, Ian Fleming, the author, is said to have based the character of Lashif on English occultist Aleister Crowley. Ooh, I did not know that. That's awesome. I didn't either. Yeah. So uh, for those who don't know who Aleister Crowley is, that might be an an episode all in his own. But British occultist. Yeah. Uh, Weird, satanic, black magic practitioner, occult leader, uh, hmm. potential World War II spy for the English or the Americans. We're not really sure. Uh, oh, shit. Very interesting. Dude, Ian, Ian Fleming himself, too, has some some interesting fucking background, too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I, I thought you'd like that one. Um, yeah, that's rad. Dude, real quick shout out to there's a uh, podcast called uh, unexplained, uh, with Richard McLean Smith, um, just called unexplained. He has an episode on, um, I think it's a two parter on Alistair Crowley. He does really quick hitters, like 20, 30 minute episodes that are just fucking packed with awesome shit. But, uh, he did, he did two on Alistair Crowley about his house, Boleskine house in like the locks of Scotland and shit. And it's, there's a, it, this house later on was like, uh, infamously bought and owned by Jimmy page of Led Zeppelin. And there's like really weird, like other families have owned it through the ages. And he tried to do like, it's reported that Aleister Crowley tried to do like a, a like a demonic. Like summoning at and, this yeah. Yeah. All this dude, that shit's so interesting. So cool. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's fuck. It's super rad. Anyone that's like, has the, like the slightest interest in that look up. I can't remember what the fuck, the episode name is but if you type in like boleskine house which is b-o-l-e-s-k-i-n-e yeah. house alistair crowley you'll find a bunch of really cool shit about that site you'll Anything. find it you'll find it unexplained is one of those podcasts that jim recommended to me that um i don't particularly like it that much but i've listened to every single episode sometimes yeah. just on one and a half speed because like i think it's his voice it, it puts me in like a really relaxed sort of trance so i don't pay as much attention so usually halfway through i'm like what the fuck is this guy talking about dude he's so (laughs) robust like he's so articulate and like the level of detail that he goes into it is i find myself yeah on certain episodes i'm halfway in i'm like i don't know where the fuck i am (laughs) i need to restart it so i mean that's unexplained yeah yeah it's not to knock this guy because like the level of like research and like the yeah that he puts into a show is fucking awesome, but I do agree. Yeah. It it's, it's like so much like your attention span's gotta be, you gotta be like sharp locked in. Yeah. It's like hypnotizing. 
Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, second piece of trivia that I thought was fun was Daniel Craig lost his two front teeth while filming the fight scene in Prague. Oh fuck! He's di- That's dope. First, the first scene in the in the fucking movie. Dennis had the to fly and replace scene? him. Damn. Yeah, I assume. That's sick. I assume so. So at some point he must have just been like, "All right, fuck it, rip them all out and give me fucking veneers." <laughs> like veneers. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's dude. I can. I'm trying to think about like now, like and pain yeah. and getting older. Two front teeth at around forty. I think he was here. Yeah, that's brutal. All right, all right. <laughs> Quick third piece of trivia. Uh, Quentin Tarantino actually showed some interest in adapting this exact movie and there was some very quentin tina quentin tarantino kind of like out of continuity blah 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 you know kind of putting his own spin on it but he wanted to shoot the movie in black and white with no opening title credits and using voiceover narration in order to incorporate like uh text from the book and Mm. it would have made the movie more like film noir which i thought would would have been like that first scene yeah Mm -hmm. and so if you couple that with Clive Owen, I thought that could have been yeah. really fucking cool. Fuck yeah, yeah. Or, that sounds super sick. Or it could have sucked. You know, he could have he could have way overdone it, but yeah, yeah. it would have been in- artsy farty. It would have been interesting to have that kind of influence on it. Knowing like Reservoir Dogs, like as like a a, a, a signpost, I could see him doing doing well. In the, I'd, I'd like to peer in like an alternate dimension where that did happen and see what that looks like. It totally. sound, sounds interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just- black and white stuff is cool, man. It really is. I think like, uh, like, did you see, uh, have you watched that shiny and Chrome, the, uh, Mad Max, the Fury road no. edition, dude, it's a black and it's like, it's called shiny and Chrome. It's like a black and white Mad Max Fury road edition. Oh, wow. It's fucking sick. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, Fury Road's dope. I've only seen it once, I think. But I was pretty blown away by it. All right, so for the uh, Cunty Review of the Week. Cunty Review of the Week. It, it, it's surprising for a, for a movie that has such high reviews. I have actually have three that I just could not whittle down into one. So Hit me. Special treat. Uh, first one. I mean, they're not, none of them are particularly good, but they're all just really <laughs> cunty. So, uh, first one is from a guy named Gregory Weinkauf from Uber Scene. <laughs> it just says Junk Bond. Get it? That's the review? Or that's just the title? Nope. That's the entire review. review. Junk Bond. <laughs> no, Grandma, I didn't get it. I'm so <laughs> numb. I just hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Yeah, it makes me think of uh, Wedding Singer, where uh, Drew Barrymore is like, he's in junk bonds. He's like, it's high yield bonds. <laughs> <laughs> they were cones. Uh, anyway, the second one is from, <laughs> let's see, Thomas DeLapa from Boulder Weekly. And it just okay. says, the spy who gagged me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way these people are fucking serious. Yeah. It's just, it's funny to hear because it's just like, you're, you shut, you're so full of shit. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. All right. Number three. Are you or are you not the black angel of death? All right. Number three is from Chuck O'Leary at fullviewdrivein.com. And this fucking guy. There's some real prestigious outlets. I know. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know that, uh, we had talked about one guy. I can't remember his name, but he's been a repeat Cunty Review of the Week from Slate. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find his review. I was looking for him to be a three-peat. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. Chuck O'Leary from whatever.com. He says, <clears throat> the man with the license to kill has become the man with the license to bore. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? I don't know who would find these boring. I j- yeah, you j- you can't like that's just a that's just wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's just flat out incorrect. Like, you're just yeah. you're you're lying. You're- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I mean for as as Bond film as this is, like I've I've sat down and like my wife has come in like two thirds of the way through, quarter of the way through, mm-hmm. and she, she's sat down and 
and watched it. If I'm watching like some trash or like some really slow, boring shit, like mm-hmm. she's like uh, invariably like five, 10, maybe 20 minutes. But like, eh, you know, how much, how much longer, you know, like, but yeah. it wasn't the case with this one. So I, t- that's tie marks to me coming from her, but Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I just, it, I feel like it's pretty accessible. I mean, you do have the action stuff and that's, that's in there. So I, I, th- I think you could just get any like regular fan of like action. You, like, fuck, if you like die hard too, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, but also I think it, it kind of, it downshifts like, like perfectly, you know, like in those spots when like the tense poker play and, you know, like there's, there's moments where shit isn't just blowing up left and right, you know, that you yeah, can totally. buy into. So I really liked how this one too, it didn't, there's like, there's a, I'm sp- I'm thinking specifically of like a scene in Skyfall. There's like multiple times where it's like, uh, it just is so obviously a fucking ad where it's like, Oh, they were, uh, uh we just lost the VW beetle bug, uh, yeah. the 2017 VW beetle bug out of the back. And it's just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Like there's just so many, it's like, it kind of gets a little heavy with that later on. Yeah. And I really like in, in casino Royale. It's like, other than the fucking watch, which really doesn't, you know, like the yeah, Omega this, watch there's none and of that, that laptop. Nice. Other yeah. other than those two things, there's there's really not like a, any product push at all. Yeah, and I that I really like that aspect of it a lot too. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they do a lot of things like there's like you cold open like into the black and white and it changes into mm-hmm. color. Um, right. You know, it's 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 they. I think they did everything right. And they just nailed it like home run for a first yeah. Bond film, like your first foray into not only a new character, but like it, it's even like the film grain, like the film stock feels like of a higher quality and it's like of a different and totally like the obvious thing too is like they, they completely like in this one, there's, there's not even Q. There's no funky gadget right. to be had. There's right. no funky like fucking every everything he does to get out of a situation. He's like facing it head on, usually with like blunt force. Like is his like, you know, he's a blunt instrument. He's breaking through a wall right. of drywall, you know, like to yeah. put it on the nose. But he's like each situation he's in, he's kind of just like rolling with it and reacting and going with like the best decision he think he can make at that point and not relying on like a watch that has a laser on it, you know, and shit like that. But, um, not to knock golden eye and like, fuck, I love Q, you know, he's awesome. Totally. Uh, what, what was his name? Llewellyn Dominic or, uh, I don't know what his real name is. Something, something Llewellyn. The guy that, yeah, I I don't know. He was the one, he had the longest run, right? There was no other character that he was in fucking, like out of the 30, I think he was in like 25, 26 of them or some, something absurd, like crazy number. And I like in, in GoldenEye, they balance like the humor and like the seriousness of everything like perfectly. Like when he's like, oh, what's that? And it's he gets up to the big fucking sub and he's like, that's my lunch. Like <laughs> he thinks it's like a gun or a fucking rocket pro- pro- propel grenade, like disguised as a fucking sub sandwich. Like, right. Uh, but yeah, there's none of that. Like they completely strip that down in, in yeah. Casino Royale, and like, uh, you know, for it, as crazy as that parkour scene is, though, like there's a lot of wild shit going on there. It's it it's they play it pretty grounded, like in reality. Like I could buy this, like totally being closer, like the closest representation, um, yeah. of like a reality. But yeah, it it does get played up. You're muted, I mean, Steve. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that that parkour scene just made my knees hurt watching the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, the, yeah, dude, my the chest. Sometimes, like when he fucking just like hucks himself and he like bangs and like he's just like latching, like I, latch mode, dude. Some of those look really rough. I would have, like, I would have given up a hundred times during that shit. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> yeah, right. Damn near every step of the way. Yeah, it's like, oh shit. Yeah, well. He got away. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Like, if you can, if you combine, look, I don't know what period of time, but there's definitely like two days here, or like he had a really rough fucking thirty six hours, like right yeah. here, like particularly probably centering around like the poker scene, like definitely fighting the stairwell, poisoning, balls yeah. maimed, 
your whole <laughs> shit rendered blue and black. Like, yeah, that's what I was like, dude, how long is he convalescing? But before he like fucking gets down with Vesper, I was like, cause those boys, man, they must have just been fucked, yeah. man. Well, when they were cutting, cutting the seat out of that wicker chair, I was like, what, what the fuck could they possibly be doing? Dude, you know, I think that ties back to like some like Jesuit like uh or like like early Catholic shit. Like they used to like do that in order to verify because I prevent think prevent masturbation. No, I think there was something about like like um fuck. Someone call in if I'm off about this. I may be talking way out of school, but I think there was a period where like like women were trying to like like come across as masculine and like hide themselves because they wanted to get higher in the clergy, but there's only like certain there's, a, there's like a threshold before. And then it's like, you can only be male and be like a fucking Bishop or a Cardinal or whatever. So they used to do that. I think in order to test if you had a fucking Johnson or not, like they would cut out, <laughs> but they wouldn't whip you with a fucking, like a bell end, like piece of They'd rope. Just go down there they would just go down there and look, look and see yeah, what flops why not down. Just, like, why not just look? <laughs> That's what they would do. They would just look. They wouldn't. Okay. But it that that reminded me of that. Like, yeah, just offhanded, fun yeah, I'm fact not, uh, history. Yeah. The only other thing I have written down that I wanted to bring up is I am not a car guy at all. Like when it comes to, but that fucking Ashton Martin dog, that car was so fucking. The '64, the one that he won off of Demetrios. Yes. Yeah. That, God, dude, that car is so fucking sexy. Yeah, that was. A oh, I thought you meant the for sure. The one he get the end one. Yeah, the end one's nice too. But yeah. that dude, that that silver one because he's you know the Ashton Martin is another car, right? That's in a you know bond. A, that's a one thing lot. they could not get away from. Like, right? That'd be like sacrilege. But it was just sick, dude, to see like, oh shit, that's the car. That's the fucking car, dude. He pulled it off of a guy in a fucking <laughs> car game. Like, what a fucking Bond story, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is my car. I, I got it off this guy in a fucking poker game. All right. Speaking of poker, oh, you're his wife. Hey, you yeah. want to come over for a nightcap? I got. I have two poker questions for John. Yep. One. The first time you watch this movie, were you also expecting the the ultimate poker scene to be the last? scene of the movie or was that just me i did yeah. okay no i did i thought that for sure okay with the title too, like casino royale and then they lead up to it i think there's so many poker scenes right like can't they talk about him in the navy him on the boat and then uh you know him getting the car like it's it's it, they really kind of hammered the 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 poker thing so i i thought that would be like the penultimate yeah scene for sure so question number two the the poker scenes in this movie, does this make it a better poker movie than Rounders? Yes or no? Fuck me. Because I love no. I love that movie so much. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a better poker movie than Round. I do like the hand, like the way. I think that the poker scenes are better in this movie. Okay. But I would definitely call Rounders a better poker movie. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, I would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I don't want to be a agreeable johnny or whatever but what? i think yeah the, your last <laughs> statement was well like a band jumping on the bandwagon but yeah. yeah like i think your last statement like nailed it was yeah the individual like scenes of them playing out like particular hands felt more engrossing and like immersive yeah. but yeah i think like like it, overall because that whole mo- rounders the whole movie is poker you know and and, and like yeah not just sitting down and playing the game, but like, where am I going to get games? And like, yep. The that, scumball friend dealing from the bottom of the deck. Yeah. But having yeah, to deal a, with his personality. Caught a hanger, Sarge. Yep. 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 <laughs> caught a hanger. Dude, that's, oh man, that's, I love that fucking scene when he gets caught up and where they at? Like Binghamton. That, <laughs> that joke would have killed in Poughkeepsie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I wrote. I didn't. I. I honestly expected Steve to call me out when I. Uh, when I was like, oh, that torture scene. One of my five favorite scenes of all time. I was. I. I put together a list of five scenes because I knew Steve was going to be like, oh yeah, and then name the other scenes right now. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, I got to have some scenes ready. I so got I, I yeah. don't sound like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, drainage. There will be blood. 
Oh yeah. Drainage, Eli. Drainage. Uh true romance with uh this is the uh, with uh walking and the yep. eggplant. Yep, yep. Do you know that one, uh, Steve? I, I haven't Have seen, seen either of those. You haven't seen True Romance? Nope. Oh man, oh, I, I gotta edit to so the list. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh Heat, barbecue and ball games. Uh and then the uh the uh choke scene in uh No Country for Old Men. When as soon as he's he's like, Yeah, I got him, sir. He had some kind of pneumatic oh, yeah. tube with him and and then he like uh, like the timing of it is just he hangs up the phone and he fucking gets him. And then you just see it's All like that top scrapes. down shot. Yeah, oh, and yeah. it's like that white floor, and he's just choking the shit, and then you just see the marks all over the floor. You get a little bit of that yeah. in Casino Royale yep. when he chokes out. That yeah. it, it harkened back to that too. But then I remembered, I was like, man, it's so more, so much more hardcore. Yeah, in yeah, oh, yeah. No Country, like you feel every breath escaping you in that scene. Dude, that one's intense. What's the baseball and? Whatever from barbecue and ball games from yeah. Heat. Yeah, what's that? That's when they. That's when he sits him down and he's like, uh, they haven't. They they've been chasing each other the whole movie. Is that where they sit down and at the he, end in the restaurant where he fucking yeah. takes the exit when he just fucking should have just kept going? Like, no, no. This is when he sits him down in the and they sit. He's like, let let me buy you a cup of coffee. And they sit down and he asks him. He's like, you ever think about doing anything else? You know, living oh, a normal yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, normal, what's that? Barbecues and ball games and shit. And he's like, nah. <laughs> like it, it, that scene between those two, it's just so fucking good. It's like I have this dream where all of the victims are around and they're just balloon head bodies. It's like, what do you think that's about? Like, I don't have enough time. Like it's just it's just that that whole interaction when they sit down is so fucking good in heat. Have you seen Heat, Steve? Yeah, I've seen it one time. Not too Once. not too long ago. Okay. That was one of so good. Robert De Niro and Al Pacino in that scene is just fucking yeah. so good. That that used to be one of my favorite go to movies to piss Jim off when we were talking yeah. about movies. I'm like, I've never I've never even seen Heat. Like, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, Heat's so good. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It I is good. Re- I haven't flashed back to that in a long time. Yeah, Jimbo oh. James showed me that movie. Really? Yeah. Damn. I really like I, didn't, that I hadn't even seen it. That director is really fucking good too. He's he's pretty much like a, a can't miss guy, Michael Mann, who did uh Heat. He's done uh what else did he do? He did uh fuck. What's the one with Jamie Foxx and uh Collateral? Tom Cruise he did Collateral. That's a good one. Collateral's fucking awesome. Yeah. Hey homeboy. I love that scene where he gets his briefcase back from those like thugs. <laughs> you know? I, what I'm talking uh, about, seen it's a good dude. One. Collateral's awesome. It's he also did. Uh, what else has Michael Mann done? He did the Mi- Miami Vice reboot movie with Jamie Fox and um, Colin Farrell, which I think has got a lashing at the time. But that's actually a solid movie. It, it's actually pretty rad. He also did Manhunter in like '88 mm-hmm. with uh, the dude from CSI, the main guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, William something. Uh, Last of the Mohicans is on his credits too. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah, that's Dan- Producer. Producer. Daniel Daniel Day Lewis. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, yeah, any anything Michael Mann's made outside of the Keep, I would say, is fucking like god tier. Awesome, awesome film. Um, okay, cool. So that'll put a pin in uh, Casino Royale. High praise. So yeah, it's a winner. Great movie. Put it in the win Appreciate column. The recommendation. Looking forward to. Uh, Quantum of Solace, even if I have cool. to watch it, it alone. <laughs> I can't wait till you get to Skyfall. So tentatively, Skyfall is peak, yeah. tentatively we'll have Skyfall sometime next month, and then we'll continue on to Spectre, and then we'll wrap uh, the Daniel Craig era Bonds up with No Time to Die, which was released 2021. 
I remember that, yeah, that, that fucker with COVID, with COVID. It got delayed like fucking seven times. A like, bunch. Yeah. Cause it was supposed to be, it wasn't supposed to be like 2019. Yeah. It, it was like a two year delay. And then it ended up being like, I think it was the same day. Like Amazon came in and got prime rights to it. So I want to say it was like, remember when like mortal Kombat came out with HBO and like wonder yeah. woman, they did same day release during COVID in theater and on if you had subscription, um, yeah, I think they, um, cause yeah, I'm pretty sure they did that. Cause I watched it like no less than like a week after it released in theaters. I watched it at home. That might be the first movie I watched uh, after COVID. Now that I think about it, you, you were you able to call, catch that one in theater. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was when they were, t- it was crazy, dude. They were only selling like every other row. Right. So, like fr- if you think about it from the front, you couldn't, there's, it was fucking no one could sit here and then it subsequently moved all the way up. Right. And then there had to be two seats between every fucking group of seating. So like you could max people you would have in a row would be like five. So me and my wife buy our seats. Now there needs to be two seats on either of us. Right. For, uh, that, that could be sold. It was fucking ridiculous. But I knew I had to. I was like, I'm not going to. That's, that's just good science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Casino Royale was uh, that was a, just such a good movie for me, and the idea of like not seeing the end of it in theater was just crazy. Yeah, I wish I could have experienced that one in theater for sure. That would have been like an end game situation for me, I think. But um, totally, yeah. I re- fuck. I like. I can't wait till we get to that point too, because we haven't. You and I haven't talked about that one, John. Uh-uh. Uh, no time to die. So I'm really, really. Can't wait till potentially looking like we'll be in like June, beginning of June. We'll talk about No Time to Die, but yeah, I I, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, that was one thing about COVID I like too because I don't fly a ton, but I happen mm-hmm. to be f- needing to fly to out to Indiana when we were looking for a house, and it was the same deal, but it was on an oh. airplane, so it was fucking awesome oh yeah totally. and i'm sure steve you can elaborate on this oh, with your God, travel yeah. and, and your vo- vocation it's like it was the best what was it i flew like delta and it was like tits i got like i i paid a little extra for like just above coach so like like business plus business or... minus or business plus yeah. or whatever so you get a little <laughs> coach bit, plus a little bit more leg room nicer chair fucking tv right in front of you stream yeah. whatever the fuck you want and it was like yeah it was like two two in front two to the right two to the left two to the back dude there was like on a big ass fucking plane to atlanta it was like fuck maybe 25 people on this plane yeah dude damn i was that's crazy living man yeah i was stretched out at one point like like on three seats like just <laughs> propped up like i own the fucking place like lounge man dude and dude. then i flew later after my grandfather passed i flew like way after like everything had died down packed mm-hmm. packed sardine yep. plane i was like fuck, fuck this sucks. i was like i'm never flying ever again um how often are you flying steve you monthly or uh these days not so much but before when yeah. you were at your peak how much like peak grind every every month yeah multiple times yeah. and Damn. during covid was the best especially on southwest yeah. because southwest no middle seat so mm-hmm. right oh uh, it was just ideal there was a, there was yeah. there was a time where i flew to san diego round trip it was $58 round trip. And, Jesus. Damn. And there was maybe 30 people total on each flight. It was it Fuck. was unreal. That's awesome. Yeah. That sounds great. I got to go to Vegas in August and I just it's like fucking $350 for a flight and I know it's just going to be jam packed. I just yep. At least it's what, only like whatever. an hour hour and a half trip. Uh, I usually go Southwest spirit, bro spirit yeah, from, uh, from where spirit. you are to some Las Vegas. Some people fear it's it. an spirit. hour flight. Some people just won't go near it. Go to googleflights.com spirit from where you are to Las Vegas. It, it should be very cheap. Okay. Shout out to Ghostbusters two soundtrack. I mean, th- it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's a short flight. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, piece of delivery for robbery homicide. 
I'm really I didn't really have any concern that you weren't gonna like this movie. There's, a, there's some other ones. I'm I'm curious at uh how it's gonna turn out, but I I had a pretty good feeling. It's hard to not like this movie. Yeah. This this one's definitely top tier Craig era for sure. Yeah. You would you would have to really be like an insufferable piece of shit to not like this movie. <laughs> yeah. Say I didn't like that. I didn't care for it. Like yeah. Yeah. Get off your high horse. Um, okay. Well, yeah, that'll do it for Casino Royale. We'll have Staring John back for subsequent Bond entries uh, in the Craig era. Oh, yeah. If you guys have any questions or uh, opinions about what we said about Casino Royale or Bond in general, you can reach out to us at wax at waxingtheporpoise.com or either of our socials. Twitter is at waxing the porp instagram is waxing the porpoise uh, appreciate all the the love and support we've re- received thus far keep the reviews and ratings coming in please um john do you want to hype what your trip was about and, and or anything else that you got uh going on the, on the twitch verse yeah sure i'll plug a little a little twitch stuff um mainly uh twitch.tv slash kinetic onslaught uh, o N S L O T. Uh, I mainly play retro games. The whole idea is I play a lot of NES stuff. So if there's a game you remember as a child that sucked ass to you and you want to see me play it, come by, give me some money and, uh, I will play the game. Uh, we talk a lot of shit, joke around, have some fun. It's about it. Uh, fighting games. That's I'll be going to, uh, Las Vegas for Evo, a fighting game tournament. Uh, it'll be the, uh, street fighter six will be out. Uh, so we'll probably be playing that, and uh, that's pretty much it. Word, Evo is like one of the top tier uh, fighting game tournaments in the states and globally recognized as well. Yeah, yeah, they do too now. Uh, originally, it was just the one, and I mean, it, people fly from everywhere to do it. It's always in Vegas. Uh, they started doing Evo Japan now, so they have a uh, nice. They do a tournament in Japan. Uh, it's mainly like anime fighters and shit over there. Uh, <laughs> guilty gear and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, guilty gear, fucking Dragon Ball, uh, that shit. Fucking cheat codes. Cheat codes. <laughs> How many years have you you've been doing Evo for fuck since like when? Since 2012. 2012 was my first year. Haven't missed a year since. Nice. It's fucking the time. It's my Christmas. It's my absolute favorite thing to do i was it always thinks of uh what is it uh kingpin when when woody harrelson brings in uh what's his fuck uh and they go into like the bowling and everything's all like fucking lit up at the end he's like yeah. he's like ishmael welcome to my church that that's like what i imagine yeah. like when you're rolling out onto the carpet and everything's all set up like oh dude it's it's uh ian uh, my my best friend First year we went out there, he came with me, and it was like Thursday night. They had all the booths set up, all the consoles set up, the stage set up, and it was like the first time I walked in and just saw it all. I was like, holy shit, and I'm sitting there, and he's like, hey, this is your shit, dude, look. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> fuck, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It was just, it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a good time. Do you think it's like uh, it's kind of hit a plateau or do you think is every year is it kind of getting ramped up? I know it's probably weird with like COVID kind of like with everything kind of threw a wrench in the spanner to keep it English. Um, What do you think? It's great. I I saw some wild ass stat where it's like they had like a 75 percent return rate uh, of people. So like the, the first time people go like they multiple years they go. It was like some crazy high percentage. Damn. And uh, every every year it's just bigger and bigger. Every, every year, nice. It's like more booths. Uh, the only the only like knock about that I would say is it's it's now become more geared around uh, the people that are coming there to watch the tournament and and sell shit. Gotcha. Where it, it's kind of become like this spectacle where it almost feels like the 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 fighting game tournament has kind of taken. It's like now there's like companies plan their fucking releases around this tournament. You know what I mean? They're like, Oh shit. We'll announce at Evo what the next game's going to be or the right. DLC. So it, it's, it's become a, it's become a pretty big, pretty fucking big thing. Wow. So it's more, it's like with anything that catches on, it's becoming less about the thing and like how we can, um, 
monetize it like the popularity of the thing totally right on but well, yeah. it's still a good time they have this crazy arcade set up there's like this whole ballroom you can go into and it's just every fucking arcade and pinball game you can you can think of just out there it's sick that's awesome sweet when is that going down that's like every fall august ish or? august yeah, it's it, it used to be the middle of July, but now it seemed it the last couple of years it's been the first weekend of August every year. Word. Cool. So yeah, I'll I'll put uh I'll give a link to your Twitch stream in the uh in the show notes. Check out Kinetic Onslaught on Twitch. Um hell of a time. Yeah, thanks. As, as always, having you on's awesome. If you're down at the Mandalay Bay, check out the Stephen Paddock suite. Stephen Paddock suite. Oh god. <laughs> I wonder if that's like a thing. Like people are like, oh, I want room four eighteen or whatever. Like, or if they like boarded it up and like Fucking it's like it's like what is that? Room two oh, is that the guy who uh, the the guy who shot allegedly yeah. shot up the uh, country allegedly. concert? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The only bummer is that uh, Jason Aldean him. survived. That's the only shame. Jason Aldean. <laughs> Take that short money saving drive. Yep. That fucking guy. Take that short money saving drive. Fucking yep. false flag, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started, man. Oh fuck. Pretty interesting, man. I have the documents. Um <laughs> All right. Well bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh <clears throat> we have to uh, yeah, so What's that? We have devolved. Yes, we have. Um, I think I have that somewhere. Uh, oh no, where is it? Symbology. You have D. You, have you must mean Rail. symbolism. Unrealized idea. Unrealized. Symbology. All right. Yep. That's gonna do it for us. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Appreciate the love. Uh, we'll be back again. Next week, tentatively, we're going to do a, a part four, volume four of the Coors Light Chronicles uh, is what we have planned. Uh, so we'll have Dick Dog back on and a surprise mystery guest. Um, getting into some choice nugs of, of those have, who have listened to previous volumes of the CLC uh, who have come to know and love uh, Dick Dog. We'll get into some, some happier times and some fun anecdotes. It'll kind of be a free for all, but. Um. Yeah. <laughs> if if you're a fan of him, I, I think we we'll, we should have a good time. So, um, yeah. Check us out next week. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and take her easy. Baseball.